Peel, how do you want us to help? <laughs> I don't know. I thought this is what you guys did. So I finally convinced them to reach out. Since then, I've had other agencies act and say, this is not that hard. Like, this should be fixed. And they're like, oh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to you on Monday. So the other thing about TikTok agencies, this is pretty wild, is that when you sign up with a TikTok agency, when you leave one, uh, you have to give them 30 days notice. And then after the 30 days notice, you can't sign up with another agency for 60 days. So for 90 days, I have no no help on the TikTok back end. Good morning, host. Oh, did you? So did you switch agencies or whatever? I can't. I cannot switch agencies for 90 days, despite the fact that these these folks have done nothing. And by the way, the agencies, they they get a share of your revenue. So when you guys send gifts, uh, it's not like a, it doesn't take away from you my pay, share. You give someone. I don't. It doesn't take away oh, from, from my TikTok. share. It, yeah, TikTok gives it to him. So I'm like, all right, well, in the amount of gifts that we've got and the amount that you guys have made off of our live and you've literally done nothing, it was, it's been pretty cool. Really? Wait, I could probably sign up with a different agency on this account. Good thinking. There we Morning, go. Now Sandra. we're talking. All right. Yeah, well, look, if you have a good agency, shoot me a DM if you like your, your agency. There's one that I've been talking to. Uh, they claim that they're good. And I know that they helped uh parker and dean both this weekend yeah it's it's the one from parker and dean that that agency reached out to me specifically so same one that worked with parker and dean who got perma banned on like every account this weekend and then came back to life and here's miss fleece just dodging perma bans like crazy despite the fact that you're consistently uh, breaking all of the community guidelines yeah i don't that was so crazy i i do feel yeah you didn't do anything wrong either and i think you know that but i went it's back just and like listened a three to day it. weekend it was the worst possible timing it's like friday yeah. afternoon and then now this, there's another holiday today so it's just like worst possible timing i went back and listened to it it might have been the most calm i've ever been on any debate ever it yeah. might have been the the most low-key debate i've ever had in my life and that was the one that got me and it was Maybe such was a great discussion. I, yeah, and big, big block. I think is who we're talking to. And he was, you know, he was great. We, I thought we were all having like a very productive discussion. I was like actually really enjoying that talk. That's another reason it was so awful. <laughs> you were, didn't you? Had a big old smile on your face. I did. I, watched I was it. like, this is great. You've had a May big I smile. Please have my mod powers, peepaw. Who's saying that? <laughs> I no. think that's. I... <laughs> Who's calling me peepaw? All right, it's Mo. Mo's allowed to do that. <laughs> Sorry, Mo. Who came up with Peepaw? When you, did I? Become... I thought you called yourself that. I didn't. When did I become Peepaw? When the diva? What? I thought that. <laughs> All right. There's diva. Bye, diva. Hi, diva. Bye, diva. I'm guessing maybe they accidentally brought you up. I've been trying to mod you. I might have clicked the wrong button there, diva. I don't know what happened. I was just trying to mod you. Are I don't we co-hosting? What's that? Are we doing the co-host feature? Oh shit, I don't think so. I think we had to do that differently. Let me see. I think you have to leave to do that. Let me Should see. Should I leave and come back? Yeah, I think you have to. It says you're offline. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do this. What? Uh, I don't know, we'll do that. You wanna do it tomorrow? Yeah, it says fine. you're offline. Oh, know. sorry Diva, that was probably me. I was just pushing the wrong buttons. There we go. Four seconds after I complain that everybody calls me Peepaw, I immediately yeah. like, just like boomer somebody up into the box. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well that's fair. Everybody can call me Peepaw, and I can't. Guys, tap the it. screen. Today is special. We need to tap the screen as much as possible. Jay's on his backup count, so we need to stay on the For You page so we can get some Republicans in the box. Share the live as much as possible push the copy link bu button as much as possible and we're gonna say this many times throughout the show hopefully when we get more people in here but also follow jay's backup account right now if you aren't following the account i've got another one too i've got rtp talks three as well I don't just even in think, case i didn't even i don't think i follow that account so. it, it was my sleuth account so it's um, rtp talks two and rtp talks three 
Yeah, I, uh, I've been so, working on numbers with my daughter. And so I was like, that if we go in succession, one, two, three, and that's how I figured the whole thing out. <laughs> so I'm like, go. Okay, yeah. So make sure you follow RTP, engage with his page and, and his content. Let's do whatever we can to sort of boost him. He's going through a hard time. Yeah, that's right. Somebody just asked me if I dipped. I have gum in my mouth. Um, I'm did. trying, oh my God. That yeah, I'm trying so something different at 9 30 think... in the morning. Well, yeah. listen, I occasionally I have dipped, um, not like tobacco though, just like the little nicotine packs. Uh, there is some research that says that that's good for your brain, but, uh, that's a, and then a little, that says it's I, a not. little nicotine, I think yeah. is, this is going to sound crazy, but just this random professor I follow, she's a history professor, super smart. Oh my God, we should have her on this show sometime. But yeah. she once gave, just made a random TikTok video about why as a professor, like she actually chews nicotine gum and she does, she's never smoked in her life. Like she's not a smoker. Yeah, I've never smoked. But she, she was explaining like small doses of nicotine, you know, just how medical studies show it, it like increases circulation. Brain it, activity. It, yeah, brain activity for like when you're doing public speaking and stuff, it's supposed to, yeah, she was, she made a huge argument and she went, she talked to her like general practitioner about like, can this hurt me? And like, yeah, it's just like, <laughs> but she's like, I don't think I should be on TikTok like even talking about this necessarily. But yeah, it's not, it's something I never thought of like small doses, little doses of nicotine, you know. Could, I don't want know, wait why do people so detrimental uh, uh, kid I don't want this to be over I just have gum in my mouth because I take Adderall and so I get cotton mouth during these lives and yeah. gum helps me I think that's why I've, I've been meaning to ask you is that why you have suckers sometimes yeah well to coat to lube up your mouth <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> is that why so that yeah. it doesn't get sticky when you talk yeah well just all it's all of that like just being live it's like three and a half hours of awkward but i think i also have like a, it's like i have like an oral fixation do you know <laughs> so, do you, i just <laughs> whatever you We're started this with today. like lubing up your mouth so don't act like i'm the weirdo uh, no I, listen <laughs> this is on me it's not on you i'm just saying yeah so like just so otherwise i'm gonna be drinking like gallons of water i'm going to be like fidgeting i think it's just you know how babies have like a pacifier yeah <laughs> I, I literally think this is something like that like okay actually you might find this fascinating because you're in you know you also have adhd or the diagnosis which allegedly missed dose yeah you can be misdiagnosed with it as well but like or it could be the signs of trauma but i was listening to one of the smartest people like i know talk about david what no what he felt the causes the root causes of adhd for some people could be and he was saying he also is diagnosed with it and he this is a literal genius this man he's on TikTok. i'll send you the video but um I would say his name, but he specifically doesn't want to be endorsed largely on TikTok because then like certain people come to his pages like Jordan, Jordan Peterson fans and stuff and like harass him. So he's like, unless people find me naturally, like don't know. He doesn't want to be like largely publicly endorsed. Yeah. So what was his like, handle? Well, exactly. I'll tell you later. But okay. um, he he was just saying that ADHD, he, you know, he believes from all of his research has a lot to do with not being able to inwardly soothe. So all of the actions, the outward actions of an ADHD person are about soothing yourself, like creating like a sense of calm so that you can focus, which looks crazy to other people. But it's because as children, like we weren't taught to like inwardly soothe, soothe ourselves so that yeah. we could like sit still and focus. So we engage in all of these actions which makes a lot of sense about me. I was also given my religion. I was not uh, allowed to outwardly soothe either. So <laughs> oh, God. I had, Jesus had to keep Christ. it. Exactly. I was unsoothable. Also inward soothing. Yeah. So I'm going to spit out this gum because now I'm self-conscious about it. Where's this? I need a piece of paper. Yeah, we probably shouldn't chew gum during the show, should we? But then it's like, do I have to give up my suckers? And like I said, it's like a pacifier, I think. It keeps me yeah. quieter. Too. I, I probably burst out saying things a lot more often. That'll be, that would probably be fine for everybody else anytime you could shut me up. Uh, you did a remarkable job on this outline today. It was devastating to ha to lose my account this last weekend because it was it was an insane week. I don't know why we didn't think that the weekend 
leading up to the Iowa caucus for the Republicans would would be insane. But of course it was. Oh. And it was absolutely insane. And I think for me, I, I think the funniest story of the week is or the weekend is watching Vivek just like watch him be crushed. Like Donald Trump has decided now, like you're no longer useful to me. You're not on the debate stage. You can't be up there like just licking my taint on this debate stage. So you're no longer useful. So I need your voters. And he just decided I'm going to take your voters now. And his uh, Vivek's voters like, OK, it's time. We're doing the transfer now. We're we're back to Trump. OK, cool. We're back to Trump. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's like so. I, I have to say, though, when I saw the video of why Trump freaked out on Vivek, I was like, I mean, Vivek, Vivek is a con man. Like, you saw it in that video. Like, watching Vivek just in real time, because think about it. That's what he did to make millions and millions on a larger scale. He engaged in a pump and dump scheme. He sold like he's a confidence man that sold confidence in a f Alzheimer's drug that had failed drug trials four or five times, then did a pump and dump scheme. I mean, that's what he did. He essentially de defrauded Alzheimer's patients. And then in real time, we watch him sort of defrauding a, 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 a older Iowan. Iowan. So like, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's that's exactly that's exactly who we all thought he was. Was anyone surprised by that? I was wa I was watching that while I went to McDonald's today because one thing I hadn't had in a long time and most McDonald's don't have this, by the way. But so if you come what across a McDonald's that does, you get a, a spicy chicken McGriddle. I didn't know that most didn't have it, but every McDonald's I've been to besides the one by my Is house it on a biscuit doesn't. Or what? Oh, no, no, it's like on. McGriddle. Yeah, OK, I see. What yeah. You're saying. So I was like, I'm going to get one of those this morning. I had a rough night. I have not been sleeping well. Do you get I, hash browns? Yeah, and a hash brown. Yeah. yeah, and iced coffee, which the key is you get the iced coffee <laughs> and then you put the it in the browns. freezer. And then uh, in a second, I'm going to grab a straw and I'm going to I'm going to drink from my frozen slushy coffee from McDonald's. It's brilliant. Um, but I was watching that while I was in McDonald's and every Monday at the McDonald's. Uh, and again, forgot because I haven't gone for a while. There is a group of. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses that the they're going witnesses. out they're, they're going out doing their missionary work that day but they should they all meet at McDonald's no they and, don't oh yeah yeah and it's all these just like <laughs> okay. uh, elderly Hispanic women and then like one guy who is way too handsome it feels schemey to me he drives like a really nice car and he's handsome and he just has like this group of elderly Hispanic women uh, that just like listen to every word he says it feels culty but anyways I that I saw them and I was thinking about like if they were talking to me because I every person I see that I don't talk to I imagine what our confrontation would be because I'm a lunatic uh, and I was just thinking about like them talking to religion about me and how stubborn I would be about religion and how stubborn they would be about leaving religion and that's kind of how I felt like that conversation is with that woman she desperately desperately wants to hang on to Trump but she she kind of likes Vivek she likes what Vivek is saying except for the part when he's like, you have to vote for me because I'm young. And she's like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. I, I love what you're saying, but I just don't know if I can do it. And then he does the thing. He does the thing that we were taught to do when we were missionaries. He's like, you have to do it. It's the right thing. It's to, to save his life. That's what yeah. he's got her believe. Like, she, yeah, what she likes about the, Vivek yeah. is he's saying, oh yeah, the government, or let's be honest, the Democrats won't let Trump be president, you know, like they'd sooner take him out and before they let him be president. So Iowa voter, as a result of that, because I can see that you love Trump in order to save him and and still get, have a, a candidate that will save the country, you must vote for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you must vote for the guy in dead fucking last. You're in Iowa, ma'am. It's very important. He said that. I think he I think he thinks that might be his only vote because he's like, you have to vote. I know for me. he was working I desperately so hard need your for vote. That one. Your vote specifically is what I need. <laughs> Did the you hug? Her in the oh, middle? gross. I, I couldn't. It was <laughs> so gross. Did he fake cry at I one point? Too? He, he was like. I was just like, if no, you guys have not. seen this, I I guess we could play it. It's yeah, it's kind of no, hard good. to let's hear. Play it. Yeah, let's see. Well, let's see. And if we need to explain what he's saying, we can yeah. give it a go, though. Let me grab my iced coffee while you're. Yeah, and then we can play. Um, and then we can read 
Viv- or Trump going off on him and True Social because it makes more sense. At, because at first, all I saw was Trump's si- True Social post and then Vivek's response to the True Social post, which was like in the middle of his in in the middle of the night, like somewhere in an SUV, <laughs> and it's freezing. It, there's a polar vortex in Iowa. So Vivek said some car, like some SUV, like yeah. a, Trump like drags him on True Social and Vivek basically agrees with every single thing he says yeah. to try to save that cabinet position. Because imagine you spent millions and millions of dollars being a fake candidate. You're a proxy candidate for Trump because you want a cabinet position or some sort of position in the Trump administration that will sort of elevate you in the political world. And because he got caught on on tape doing this whole thing with this voter all of that could you know this could have been this could have slipped away from him well and it could be that it also could be just that um i think i don't think it's that video i i think it's possible that it's that video but oh what it's I just think a it catalyst is, yeah and it's about that yeah, time the polls are tightening in iowa it's about and that time yeah like if trump was if trump didn't have like a 70 or like you know like a 50 point lead at one point that's down to single digits we probably wouldn't be worried about it but it is like the the polls are tightening ron DeSantis did his best campaign work i've ever seen somebody got that motherfucker a thesaurus for christmas he's saying words he's never said before i can't even remember the word he has that he a said. good memory yeah I very think, you good know memory. what i mean yeah like yeah. he's not learning like they said commit these to memory and that guy i mean he can memorize i will say that <laughs> I, well, you have the clip on here at yeah. some point. We'll get to it. But he I said a crazy word that I, I can't even remember what I didn't know the word. I'm like, how do you know that word? You're an idiot. Anyway, here, here's the well, here's the video of Vivek, and we'll see how this goes and if it makes sense. They are You're scared of Trump. Oh, they're, Hold they on. Are. Let me see. I'm just making sure it's up. Scared of you. Just they are. They're scared of Trump. Oh, they are scared. And they will stop at nothing, but we're not going to let him get away with it. I've got fresh legs. I'm not wounded. So he's saying, Vivek's saying, she's saying, okay, like, they're like in a corner whispering. This is like, looks like an Aaron Sorkin movie. It's like grainy and gritty and like the camera's going back and forth. I think it does that on purpose. It's, well, whoever's filming it, we don't know who filmed this. Like, it's not professional. It's shaking too much to be professional. He puts this shit out all the time. No, it's not Vivek. It's a guy called MJ Truth. It wasn't Vivek. Oh, it wasn't? Oh, okay. That's okay, what I'm saying. Sorry. I don't think he wanted this. I guess though. that makes sense. Ooh, yeah, this is was, adding fuel to your conspiracy. Was, yeah, it's yeah. like an ex. Well, on the far right, that's this whole thing. It was like an expose of like, oh, we caught the. Vi- now we see the real him. Like, so what he just said, she's saying, I think you're right. Like, what you're saying, they won't let him be president. Right. And he's saying, yeah, and I'm not wounded. Like, the government's not after me. I have fresh legs. Like, basically saying, yeah, I'm the only logical choice. I'm not going to let this man do it. You know, when you this said eliminate, that gave me a chill. But because I'm scared. Because of you. you think it's false or because you think it's true? I think it's true. Yeah. Did he dub in background music? Someone did. This person. <laughs> whoever posted this video did. Yeah. Okay. Because so, it's so dramatic. I didn't notice it She's the like, first they're time. not going to let him win. And she's like, he's like, I know. <laughs> This is the most. That's why I said Aaron Sorkin. This is the most dramatic scene I've ever seen. I think they will stop it. using to stop that. Stop Trump. I am I it's sad, but it's the truth. It's the sad, but it's the truth. So I'm but asking you to do your part, and we're gonna You know, we're not we can do this. Polls, we can do this. this. <laughs> they say, How do you feel about the United States? And I say, I'm worried and I'm fearful. Do you hear that? This is where he goes in for the hug. Now he's he's embracing her. <laughs> uh, and she goes, he, she, he, she goes, they say, how do you feel about the United States? And I say, I'm worried and I'm fearful. That is the steady diet of fear that these people are being fed. Great news, ma'am. I know how to fraud. I know how to defraud people out of money. It's going to be okay. This Let me my give you a hug. Radio. <laughs> yeah. My job that you don't have to feel that way in this country. But we're losing it. We're, lo- you think we're losing it. It, it pains me to hear that. I think he fake cries right there. He's trying. Look, look yeah, this I think whole he tried time, to cry and gave up hard on to it. Cry. Yeah, he's yeah, trying. Right. The, he's, 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 he's like, so you can just see it. He's like, like just big. <laughs> hear it in his voice. 
ma'am, I just, and then he's like, fuck this. I'm going back. I, I do not have a soul. I do not have a heart. I can't cry. And this is coming from somebody, me. I cry all the fucking time. I cry about everything. I'm an, an emotional train wreck. Uh, God, so I'm, I'm not saying that it's. How many times have I cried since you've met me? Every goddamn day. <laughs> every, every day. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Young, vibrant, and that's where our founding fathers were. Yes. It's 1776 moments. He just said, that's what our founding fathers were. It's 1776 moments. It's 1776. Look, it's those 1776 moments. Bad, bad news, Vivek. If this was 1776, yeah, you wouldn't you have would, a seat at the table. You wouldn't be in in this. <laughs> you wouldn't even be on the ballot, Vivek. Like somebody, this man is lost. I get emotional. I'm emotional about this country. I need your support on Monday. She goes, I'm getting emotional. And he goes, I'm emotional about this country. Yeah, me too. I also <laughs> I also have emotions that are real. I for sure. I definitely have emotions. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're you're picking at my shell. You are. Yeah. But you know, I've got it's about this country. country. It's about this country. You wanna save you wanna save Trump, you vote for me. I'm telling yeah. you that. Did you hear that? It's about <laughs> this country. It's Why are they whispering? If you, Why are they Because they, they, right they're now? having a secret meeting. That's what this is about. They're don't tell anybody. A, don't, don't tell anybody, but I'm the only one that can save Trump. Yeah, we he said, if you want to save Trump, you have to vote for me. That's what he literally told this woman who's like in tears because she's worried Trump's going to be unalived. Like, I'm not a Trump supporter, but this is so disingenuous. By the way, like, no matter when or how Donald Trump's Trump dies, there are going to be tens of millions of people in this country who will claim it was Hillary Clinton. Like, it does not matter. It could be on live TV, like it, it could be a cancer diagnosis, it could be anything. And they would still like, it, no matter how he goes, it will be a conspiracy theory. I was thinking about this this weekend. Like that, that's going to be a weird day for America because so many, and, and for years people will be like, oh, somebody took him out. No, it wasn't the like four meals of McDonald's every day. Cheers, McDonald's. It was nice to see you this morning. Or, or like never taking care of yourself or being in your mid eighties or however old he is when it happens, it will be a conspiracy. Sorry. No, I think, are we good on this? I mean, that's the point. It just goes on like this. It's like two minutes of just, you have to vote for me. It's the only way to save Trump and keep him alive. Like I, The only part I liked is at the end, she's um, like, hey, you did your best. You at least made me think about not voting for Trump. She's, yeah. She still won't let it go, but she's like, you did make me think about it for a second. Yeah. Or would that's, like and, and look, if you, if you actually were somebody that wanted wanted things to get done in in the trump way in the maga way like i think there's a good argument for vivek there is like he is younger he is going to connect with uh maybe different people but <laughs> she did not give a single solitary fuck what what vivek is struggling with right now is that when you run your entire campaign on this guy is the greatest and he's in the campaign you're eventually you have to go against that guy and when that happens you don't have a campaign anymore. Your your campaign is over. You have nothing else to say other than what he's saying now. I'm younger. I'm not wounded. I'm not wounded. Oh, it's God. so it's so true that like, um, yeah. I, this so let me read. This is so this is the true social post that made me try to go look around and figure out why had Trump so suddenly turned on Vivek. So this Trump posted this on Saturday night. Vivek started his campaign as a great supporter, quote, the best president in generations, meaning Vivek used to say that stuff about Trump, etc. Unfortunately, now all he does is disguise his support in the form of deceitful campaign tricks. Very sly, but a vote for Vivek is a vote for the other side. Don't get duped by this. Vote for Trump. Don't waste your vote. Vivek is not MAGA. The Biden indictments against his political opponents Opponent, will never be allowed in this country. They are already beginning to fall. MAGA! <laughs> Five exclamation points. That's why what? he's saying 
That's what's why, beginning to fall, by well, the way. That's what I'm saying. That's why the reason I know that it's this video is because what he was saying in the video, that's why he's saying Trump's wounded. He's saying, like, they're not going to let Trump be president. Like, all these indictments, they're going to use to keep him from being president. So you need to vote for me because I'm the only one enough like Trump to also save the country. Like, and that's why Trump's saying, like, these indictments are going to go away. Like, you, you're telling people to vote for you because of, you know, I'm wounded. But yeah. he, his point is, I'm not like, shut up. <laughs> I mean, except for uh, he is. <laughs> he is extremely wounded. I will say, though, I don't like like I, you know, Trump, for better or worse, is at least an original. I don't like the True. the hangers on doing the. It is very disingenuous of a vague to literally do a knockoff impersonation of Trump. You know what I mean? Literally yeah. word for word become him. Same with DeSantis. And then now at the very end, which I understand is how elections work, but not even at least DeSantis is now publicly speaking out against Trump. Vivek is in corners, you know, with one voter like in a, in a whispering. I corner. hope Trump doesn't hear this, but <laughs> exactly like, come on, Vivek, like I don't support Trump in any way, but I definitely don't support like these weird impersonators who have literally rose to importance pretending to be Trump and then like turning on him in a dark corner. Yeah, uh, Benny in the Discord just drop it. Trump is uh, truthing at him again today. Uh, vote for Vivek is a wasted vote. I like Vivek, but he played it too cute in quotations. <laughs> Whatever that means. Did somebody else say cute? He played it too cute with us. Caucus tonight, vote for Donald J. Trump. Build up the numbers. In November, we must take our very troubled nation, a nation in decline, back from crooked Joe Biden and the radical left Democrats and thugs who are destroying it. MAGA! This stop that scared the crap out of me. Um, well, so this do you want to hear some of Vivek's response? So, Trump, the I, I do, but this, can, just real quick, can okay, we just then. for the Trump people we'll who tap are here, the screen, guys? Let's get yeah, to 70k, you. let's get on the for you page so we can get some Republicans to talk to us. For the Trump people that are here, this is this is nonsense talk like this isn't good politics it, he's not saying anything it, it, do you think there will ever come a time when like people from mag will be like, oh looking back he didn't ever say anything he never once said anything that had any substance and i i challenge somebody to give me an example of trump saying something with substance that he wasn't reading stumbling through on a teleprompter donald trump off the cuff on truth social he says nothing none of that makes any sense except for the part where vivek voting for vivek's a wasted vote that makes sense but like he played it too cute with us what does that mean uh, we must take our very troubled nation, a nation in decline. The nation is getting better by every measurable number that he loved to talk about. It's not declining. Uh, crooked Joe Biden again. No proof there's a crooked Joe Biden. Radical left Democrats. Oh, yeah, that's why they're just like acting like neocons most of the time. Yeah, thugs. Who are the thugs? Who are the Democrat thugs? Moskowitz? No, God damn, he's scary. No, thugs is... Yeah. That's what he refers... Or, yeah. or is that, well... Yeah, minorities. That yeah, I mean, that's, that's traditional. Say. I mean, for a long time, like in his rhetoric, or that's. I mean, that goes back to Schmatz. You know, whose rhetoric? Same thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's not. He didn't come up with that on his own. But again, not saying anything. Just everything oh, he does is a dog a whistle, dog whistle, dog whistle, dog whistle, dog whistle. It is. It is. Like it's like a see, read between the lines. Like everything Trump says in True Social has another meaning. I'll just play, I'll just um, play a little bit of, this is Vivek in his car after Trump attacked him on Saturday night on True Social. This is Vivek's response. Like, it's just him basically agreeing. You know, Trump said like, whatever. It's just him agreeing and saying, Trump's right. Like, they're out to get him. Here's the hard truth and nobody seems to want to acknowledge it, but it's what's happening in plain sight. And I'm going to ask you to open your eyes. They want to narrow this down to a two horse race between Donald Trump and Nikki Haley, a puppet who they can control. Then they want to eliminate Donald Trump. that that happened. I think we're going to look back a year from now and say, how.
Could we not see that happening when every clue was hiding in plain sight? They're selling us the rope today that they're going to use to hang us tomorrow. And we have an obligation to this country to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm in this race because we have a duty to this country and the America First movement to make sure this lives on no matter what. It didn't start in 2016. It started in 1776. And the system has made clear they're going to now stop at nothing. And I mean nothing to keep Donald J. Trump out of office. I have pushed back against this at every step. I filed FOIA demands against the Biden administration. What did Biden and Merrick Garland tell Jack Smith and those federal You filed FOIA requests, yeah, FOIA you, dumb, you dumb little bitch. Those are FOIA requests. You can't just call it a demand because you are, were really serious about it. It's a request. You know why it's not a demand? Because you don't have any power, Vivek. You're a nobody. You, all, you literally just scammed people and then came into the GOP and got your dick kicked in by Nikki Haley for two straight debates. And now you're back to being a nobody who just happens to have a money. These are not FOIA demands. You make no demands, Babek. You, you don't have the authority to make demands. But I do want to point out... What what he's talking about, this is what's crazy about where we've gotten. What Vivek is saying is, they will stop at nothing. Oh, you mean legal processes? <laughs> they will stop at using the Constitution as it's, as it's written to keep somebody off of the ballot. And I will not allow them to have... Uh, allow that to happen. I think when he talks about 1776, he's talking about before July of 1776. <laughs> like prior. He's talking about the first half of the year when there weren't any rules, right? Like that's the part of 1776 he likes. The problem is in July when those rules came into play, that really fucked things up. No, exactly. He absolutely is. And if you notice that, he's kind of saying, okay, what Trump's saying is right but he's still making the point they're trying to get rid of him. Do you know what is what he's doing? It's like he's still make, trying to make that same point of, but he's under attack and like, I'm just here like as the backup in case, like it's ridiculous. He walks a tightrope. He's good. Yeah, he he is a used he can't car, even, but he used can't car adjust. salesman. He can't adjust his his whole game. Everybody, including Donald Trump, is calling out his game yeah. and like his 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 grift. And he's like, uh, well, I'll just keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, just, exactly. I told that story about that guy, Bill Denny, that died, that was a member of my golf club that just scammed people his whole life. And then he got on 60 Minutes and they like they unveiled it. They're like, look, this is a scam. And he's like, nah, it's not a scam. And everybody that saw it in the country knew it was a scam. And he just kept doing it. He just went on and found other people. He did. He didn't have a different way to make money. And that's Vivek. He has he's a one trick pony and his one trick is kissing Trump's ass. It's it's wild. I have to I want to. Did you see in the outline this other thing that I saw that I just want to play that's wild. There was the clip of Vivek's wife talking to Iowa voters and they asked her, you know, or he she was basically saying, like, what are some questions, you know, about like that would make you feel more comfortable? And they base, you know, or what are some issues like some barriers to entry for Vivek in and voting for him? And they literally said, oh, you know, it's not us. So this is like what looks to be a couple, a guy and a, a woman and a man. And they're just like, it's not us. But what we've heard is, you know, his skin color. That's. Literally, I, I'll, I'll just play the beginning of this because they say it yeah, right. Sorry, in the I got distracted by Vivek. Oh, go, go play, play that. I'll do this next. Yeah, it's just in a, it'll just take a couple seconds. So what, are, what do people say gives them like, oh, I can't vote for him because what are the things that they tell me? What, what answers can I help you provide? Wow. Yeah. Or just see. Well, you can't hear it, but he said, you know, the, the, his skin. Yeah, keep this is the, first of all, this is the same party and the same guy who spent years without evidence and despite the evidence to the contrary, claiming that Barack Obama was born in Kenya. This is the same party that John McCain had to regularly stand up and say, no, this is not, this is not a Muslim plant, right? This is a party that sees a different skin color and gets scared. And uh, much of that fear and much of the fear mongering and much of the reason that they believe these things is because Donald Trump himself, private citizen Trump, spent millions of dollars promoting this lie that that barack obama was born in another country it's still the same party and it's still the same guy and it blows my mind that vivek would think that things had changed 
Like if it, it, if it, you can you can walk like a duck, you can talk like a duck, but at the end of the day, Republicans are going to still think you're just a brown-skinned minority plant that's here to replace them. It doesn't matter. It, this is why we we've said uh, multiple times. When you, when you talk about nationalism and when you talk about separating us from the world, there is no end to how much we can divide each other. Once once you have nationalism, let's say you have yourself a, a nationalist state, then you're going to divide. Then let's say you get into an ethno state, you can still find ways to divide. You can what country did you come from? What religion are you? And and Vivek will always be the first one out with the Republican Party. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter that I think Vivek is a is a smarmy little scumbag. Like he's just a crook. It doesn't matter. Yeah. He could be a he could be their best candidate, and he'd be polling at these numbers because of what he looks like. There, there's he is the MAGA candidate, and he, his numbers suck. Nobody would take him. By the way, Vivek has responded to Donald Trump, and finally, it looks like Vivek has developed a backbone. Do you want to hear what oh, he has to say? He and good, he should yeah. because I'm glad to hear that he should. It, yeah. Like this is, he may as well say the truth. But I think at first he wanted that cabinet position, and maybe he's realizing now that day is not coming. <laughs> You're going to regret those words in a second. Oh, I've defended it? Trump at every step and respect him immensely. You won't hear me attacking him. Oh my I'm asking God, for your no. vote tonight. No, I didn't grow a backbone. I tricked you. He's still a little bitch. Is this on Twitter? He's just like, is thanks for Twitter? mentioning my name, Trump. Is this on Twitter? Yeah. X. Sorry, I got. Yeah, he was on right. X. Yeah. Uh, who put this up? Benny put this up in the in the Discord. I. So when did he? He tweeted that this morning. God. Yeah. We cannot walk into the other side's trap and watch the puppet masters quietly trot Nikki into power. Shut up. But I guess he has to say that because anyone that would vote for him is a Trump voter. So you know what I mean? Like there's no Yeah, other... like the dumbest of the Trump voters. Yeah, because and DeSantis has man managed to separate himself a little bit, you know, like he's somewhere a little a little bit establishment. Like he's been flanked by Thomas Massey and Chip Roy all weekend. What like, a crew. Just talking finally talking about Trump. It's been interesting to listen. Like Tom, Chip Roy finally drew a line in the sand. Like he's confident, I guess, his district won't abandon him even in the face of him abandoning Trump. So I'm proud of Chip Roy. He still I, I don't like Chip Roy's politics very much, but I'm proud of him for for like to, in all fairness for Thomas Massey and Chip Roy to do what they're doing, even if they're attaching themselves to like the, I actually think the worst candidate. I think DeSantis might be the worst candidate out of all of them, but at least they well, stood yeah. up. At least they're willing to stand up against Trump. I, I give them the the most amount of credit they deserve is that and I'm, I'm proud of them for that and if chip roy's whole thing is like i'm actually a real conservative and that's the bottom line if you are a real conservative not voting about who's in what bathroom if you are a real conservative an economic conservative you cannot vote for donald trump <laughs> like, you can't he is the opposite of a fiscal conservative but he is the but he's the same as a fascist so if that's what you're looking for, that's very there's your true. guy. That's yeah. very true. Should we go over some DeSantis stuff? Please. So let me just. There's so many. Oh, my gosh. There's so many clips we could go over. So let's see. Well, DeSantis commented on Vivek being thrown under the bus, which was, you yeah. know, it, not it, DeSantis's like, response. Yeah. He, Vivek should have copied this and put it into his own words. It was a really good response by, again, what, I don't know what happened to DeSantis. I don't know if somebody cast a spell on him. Somebody certainly gave him a thesaurus, but somewhere after, I, I think maybe after the, the final debate with the Vivek and Chris Christie were in, DeSantis took a new direction. Uh, and if he would have campaigned like this the entire time and left the woke shit behind, I think he'd be doing much better. He, it, it's probably too little too late because everybody now knows who he is. Uh, he went mask off early. Uh, you don't do that. You do mask off after. You're not supposed to do it early. It's after. But uh, the Ron DeSantis campaign in Iowa is actually is like if you're a fan of political science, if you're a fan of campaign, like he's done very well in Iowa. He's running a good campaign now. This is and he's flanked right now by Chip Roy hey. and Thomas Massey when he's yeah, done Um, 
never seen a candidate run for an office and basically campaign for another candidate in the same race before, and that's what's happened. But the minute he wasn't useful, you know, they they, 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 they dropped the hammer on it. So that's just kind of the way, way they are. But look, we are going to go forward as a party. We can go forward in a way that's focused on people's issues, that's focused on a great agenda for America, or we can go forward uh, with Trump, which will be focused, the 2024 election, on legal issues, on criminal trials, on convictions, on, on all these things with January 6th, and that gives the Democrats um, a huge advantage. Uh yep, look, that was such a great response. <laughs> it, yeah, it was, it was uh, like I said, perfect, it, exactly what he should have been doing the whole time. It's the attacks he should have been doing this entire time. If Ron DeSantis really wanted to be a serious challenger against Trump, this is how he should have ran. And and look, frankly, the the GOP, they, they fuck this up every time. I don't know how they didn't learn from 2016. When you saw like the rise of Donald Trump, what he would do is he picks a candidate, he attacks that candidate, and then once that candidate loses, loses he collects their votes. Right, and mm -hmm. he just climbed the ladder, and he slowly picked people off, and he wound up with a base that you couldn't. Do Lion anything. Ted, Lil Marco. <laughs> yeah, and he wound up with a base that is so strong that you can't beat him unless it's one v one. The Republicans never had a chance to beat him because they didn't put up one candidate. They put yeah. up multiple candidates, and there's still two and a half, two and a quarter candidates left against Donald Trump. You have Haley DeSantis and just the itty bitty remnants of Vivek. But if, if you took their numbers, I'm looking right now, if you took them all together, you'd have Haley's at like- Guys, tap uh, the screen, let's get to 100K, 18, share the 36. live with a Republican, with all your Republican friends or non-Republican friends. And yeah. make sure if you haven't followed Jay's backup, cause Jay has not gotten his, I'm sorry, Jay, I just, I'm gonna be doing this periodically. So Good. get used to it. Jay has not gotten his main account back. Jay, is there anything, this someone, an, a lovely commenter actually wrote this a couple minutes ago and I forgot to, we were talking, so I didn't want to interrupt. Is there anything everyone can do to help you get your account back? Or it, do you want them to message TikTok? Response today from TikTok, um, and I haven't got one yet. So if I don't get a response from today, uh, yeah, we could do, we could send some emails. We could add a little pressure. I don't know if that ever works. I don't want to waste people's time. And, and yeah. look, I appreciate that. I also appreciate the offer. That's very kind. Whoever, whoever said that, I appreciate you guys uh, being willing to go to bat for us. Uh, I don't know if that it will be worthwhile or not, but if I don't get it back today, it may be time to just try, uh, try, uh, try some different stuff. Somebody, uh, Corey, I don't know if she's here. Just messaged me. I did email them. She said, she said, in working with China, it's always good to remember to apologize like it was your fault when you write an email. <laughs> so I did. I wrote an email. I was like, my bad. I didn't read the community guidelines. That's funny. Even though I, yeah, Corey, there's, there's that's Corey. funny. Yeah, that's I was like, yeah, that was good advice. Sorry, I'm just making sure I follow Corey really quick. Follow you say, back, Corey. Thank you for Corey supporting Corey does ASMR. Jen. I can't, I can't awesome. do ASMR. It messes with me, but that's what Corey does for, uh, for her TikTok account. Um, so yeah, just, guys, tap the screen. Sorry, I'm not, I'm just no, tap the screen. And again, follow Jay's backup. That's the account we're on now. And then there's also an RTP talks three. Okay, I'm done now. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so if you took Haley DeSantis, Ramaswamy and, and Christy, and you put those numbers together, they are right there, you know, three or four points back of Trump. That's what the Republicans had to do if they were serious about beating Trump. And that's what they have to do after Iowa. Uh, Christy did his job and he, he stepped away. Uh, Vivek probably won't. Uh, but that, I think those, he only really pulls from Trump there. And then maybe like a, a small, there, there's like a, sm a really small group of, uh, let's call them bad views Republicans where they don't really like Trump, but they like kind of what Trump likes. So they're like RFK or, uh, Vivek. That, no, that's... I think Bad Views gets it. Remember, he used to love Vivek. And yeah. then after watching Vivek in the corner with that woman, the voter, you know, he's like, I just, every time I listen to Vivek talk now, I don't know if and he's like, okay. I just well, get used car salesman. So well, that's, ba that's Bad Views new version. Let's pretend that <laughs> he's reset to his default settings before, but there, there is a group of people and I didn't mean, I didn't yes. mean to shit on, but there are, a, there is a group of MAGA voters who don't like Trump, but they like the America first. 
they like the in your face they like the talking about the deep state bringing yeah. down the cabal they like that stuff and and vivek speaks to them better than trump because they've seen trump they they know what his trick is and they're they're also not trusting of the government so trump is now part of the government oh right? no that is bad there. no you're right yeah. yeah like the group the young i think it's like younger guys on youtube who like you know want to they see the establishment as the corruption and yeah, yeah. like want to tear that down yeah for sure i know exactly what you're talking and that's that. and that vivek will soon be a podcaster with that audience he should be yeah he's better than tim pool not much but he's better i don't know if it's gonna pay like the pump and dump schemes you know what i <laughs> well, yeah well look I, fortunately for him he's he's probably set for life on that pump he and dump is, scheme yeah. he's he's gonna be okay um let me play right. you one more desantis clip really quick of this is Please. like the new DeSantis. this is just 20 seconds the new desantis who's dragging trump like this i just thought he had some really good moments while and... she's pulling that up for any republicans who are in the chat that want to discuss any of this uh please come up at any time we will stop our reading and and have a conversation with you uh, if you are in the comments and you want to troll Republicans into coming up here, please do. Uh, Ophelia's dad, I see you. Um, we're we're just we have a full slate today. I, I one of these times we're gonna we're gonna have some dead time at the end. It it happens every week or so where we'll have some dead time. We'll bring everybody out that's not opposition. I see you there. I know we talked uh, in in DMs, and I know there's something you want to talk about in New Jersey, but we just we have a full slate today, or in New York. So I, I promise that at some point we can get to you, and I and I want you to know that we're not ignoring you. But go ahead. Okay, here. Cares about you can be the most worthless Republican in America, but if you kiss the ring, he'll say you're wonderful. You can be the strongest, most dynamic, uh, successful Republican and conservative in America. But if you don't kiss that ring, then he'll try to trash you. You know what? You deserve a nominee that's going to put you first, not himself first. I just thought that was a good... He was full of these sound bites all weekend. Yeah. Imagine if if Ron DeSantis was a, a good person. Uh, well, and a candidate worth voting yeah. for. This would be, this would be, we'd all be standing up going, yeah, fucking, you're damn right, DeSantis. Like, if this was Nikki Haley saying this, I'd probably be really happy. I'm like, I'm rooting for Nikki Haley, even though I know that that means that Republicans win the White House. And probably I, World War III. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, look, it's the Republican Party. They're not yeah. really going to let a woman make decisions, right? That's so, a good point. That's yeah. a good point. It's going to be the deep state running in anyways. But I, I just prefer Nikki Haley over DeSantis or Trump or Vivek. Uh, DeSantis is just so reminiscent of Lil Marco. Like, isn't he? This is just Marco Rubio vibes. Like, that's it, I just feel like it's he's embodying. And like the, now we have Lil Marco came out this weekend and endorsed Trump. Finally, like this you know, i just that's the same track we're on i was looking i was going over um like 2018 little marco you know who's just trashing trump calling him a con artist and all this stuff and little marco always comes though by the end hat in hand cr you know crawling on his knees to trump with his hand out saying endorse me the only reason little marco is in the house of representatives right now is because he crawled to trump for money during right. the midterms you remember there's something there. Yeah, there's he's something, got something there. Yeah, there's definitely something there. I agree. It, 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 it's it's sycophantic. It's it it's reminiscent of uh, Lindsey uh, Graham. Yeah. Yes. It, it's, yes. It's it's yeah. It's reminiscent of Jeff King. Sessions. It's giving yeah. the humiliation. Ted King. Cruz. It, it, it here's what it really is. And actually, let's just be honest about what it really is. These people want power. And they, and they are sizing up their, they're sizing up what's in front of them. And they understand that in order to keep power in some of these districts, especially in Florida, Florida leads the country in a lot of things. What they might be number one at is pussy politicians, like just the pussiest politicians. And I mean that as a pejorative, not, uh, I mean it directly at them. Like these are cowards. These are people who pretend that they're tough uh, behind a, behind a pew and they're not tough which is why Donald Trump has been able to go in 
and pick off every one of these people. Every one of them has bent the knee to Donald Trump. And by the way, should Ron DeSantis drop out and decide to run for a different office, you think for one second he's not going to go kiss Trump's ass? You think for one second he's not going to go right back to Donald Trump and beg for his endorsement and, and apologize for the, the mean things that he said? Absolutely he's going to do that. They all do. The, the Republican Party has never, it's never been more transparent who are the cowards, who are the people that are there to legislate, and who are the people that are there just to collect either power or a paycheck or investments. It is, it is remarkably clear, and I guess we can give Trump credit for that. He did make the Republican Party more transparent if you're not a moron. <laughs> yes, there you go. There... <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, like I just when Lil Marco was endorsing Trump again this year after holding out because, you know, deep down inside, he's just simmering with rage that he has to crawl on his knees back to Trump every year. But without fail, he does it. You're right. There's nothing these people won't say or do. And it's just out in the open now. <laughs> Lil Marco's maybe the only one that ever got the better of Trump in a debate. There was the one where he just he kept can debate for sure. He kept making fun of Trump. He's like every time he's going to say <laughs> yeah. the same thing about the the walls are, or the lines around the states, and it was hilarious. It was the only time he had ever he he got he talked about Trump's hands. He was the only one that ever fought back and like landed some blows against Trump. And now here he is, like I'm sorry, I didn't mean the mean things I said when I was running against you. <laughs> exactly. I mean, there's just so many funny, like the Trump rally, Trump had so many quotes this weekend. Did you see the one where he basically is like, if you die, you know, you still need to get to vote for me, even if you aren't alive doing it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was a slow weekend or if just like everybody was focused on Trump. It was interesting reading through your outline today because I was like, oh, shit, uh, I'm not going to be up to date. I've had a I've had a terrible weekend, just so everybody knows, so, so that you can all feel bad for me. Um, yes. the, <laughs> my the daughter's losing sick. Losing his account's the least of it. Yeah. Yeah, that was the least. My daughter's sick. Weekend. I got a I got a hip thing that sucks, so I don't sleep at night. So I woke up this morning I'm like this sucks. Like I got to catch up. And most of it I had already seen. Uh, but but Trump, he was a headliner this weekend. He's got to be thrilled with his work he put in this weekend. <laughs> He's getting clicks. Yeah, and he said, "Oh my gosh!" And the he other one like shit, I wanted to point out the other quote that, like, I think the one about you know the even if you're sick as a dog, even if you unalive right after you have to get there and vote for me or whatever. I mean, that's that's crazy. But then the other one he said was the whole uh, like he. It's like he has to like s slip these things in. Like the other one is listen he basically slips it in he's like oh i'm gonna be president for four years and beyond like he can't not say it he can't like, help it he he's telling you like this is what he plans to do not leave office but nobody had to call me because i made the commitment and we kept you first in the nation as long as i have anything to say about it and that we have a good chance of saying for four years we'll have a lot to say about it four years and beyond but nobody had to call me it's just like he can't not say it. And now what's what's that excuse, do you think? <laughs> Casey, I, I get it. Somebody's saying I thought it was... Let me just clear this up. The pain in my knee is from my hip. We believe it is sciatica. So <laughs> you can stop spamming that one. But uh, uh, what's the? what do you think the excuse is going to be on this one? Because before it was I'm only going to be dictator for a day. And now he's saying four years and beyond. Well, how could he? There, there's only one way beyond exists. He, he can't win another election. Uh, he used to do that thing where he's like, well, since the first one was stolen from me, I get a redo on that one. So I get three terms. Do you remember when he was saying that? When he was like, I'll run again. And then since they stole one from me, I'll get a third term. Like he just makes shit up. I just wanted to correct something really quick. I just Marco Rubio is a senator. I just was thinking that Val Demings was in the House and that he beat her. But yeah, Marco Rubio is in the center is a senator. Do you remember Val Demings, the old police chief in Orlando? I, I love that woman. I hope she runs again. Anyways, I'm sorry. No, you're good. I was done with. I was done with. What okay, I, was I didn't know if I interrupted. I was just addressing no, no, no. the comments because I hate when I get something wrong and I don't correct it. Okay. I've never had that happen where I've corrected <laughs> exactly. it. You have right. experienced yeah. those moments, yeah. but I it's the correcting. Yeah, color. love Val Demings. Val Demings, she better be running again. We better have the Democratic Party needs to fund another campaign. 
her speech and debate skills like that Marco Rubio Val Demings debate um, in the mid last midterms. That was one of the best debates. I don't remember it. I don't remember seeing that. That was like I had never seen her. I'd heard of her, but I had never seen her in a debate. She is so impressive. So hopefully we'll get to see her. I mean, I can't imagine how great she was because Marco Rubio, you know, like you said, he's quick. Like he's, he's a good politician. He's, he's good. good. At it. He's good. Yeah. I know. And he took I think his self esteem like Trump, what Trump did to him with that Republican primary. I mean, that damaged him. But well, that's you know, true. He's he was the next guy. He was he next was. in line. It was like this the is the crazy apparent. thing about what Trump did. When you guys want to complain about people that have been there in Washington forever, just remember that the Republican Party post Mitt Romney was poised and they felt really, really good about this young crop of, of up and comers. And you had uh, Ryan, Paul Ryan yeah. and Marco Rubio. Both of them were superstars. And in the DeSantis Party. was even kind of like, yeah, youngish, young adjacent. Yeah. We'll call him young adjacent. Uh, but that, th like, that was that's where we were looking. At. And then what was the Bobby Jindal, right? You oh, had yeah, Bobby, yeah, yeah. Bobby Jindal. It was this younger group. You had the postpartum after the 2012 election, where the Republicans came together and they're like, "What happened?" And they wrote up this whole this. Whole, they did research, and it was uh, what's that guy's name that has the beard now, that uh, he does the voter stuff. Used to be for Fox. Um, he would always do like the, whatever the the groups. I know what name. you're talking. Yeah, I can't. The focus groups or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, but I have know it what in you're there. Anyways, he helped run that, and they went through, and they not not Wolf. Um, and they went through wh where they were struggling. Luntz, thank you, Frank Luntz. Thank. Yeah, yes. UK Cole. Frank well Luntz, and, and Trump goes after him all the yeah. time. Well, the reason <laughs> is true because social still to this day for 2016. Yeah, because Frank Luntz <laughs> knew. He knew exactly what Republicans needed to do because they hired him to find out what they needed to do. What they found out is that they needed to go younger. They needed to embrace minority groups, which is why it was perfect and timing. And mail-in ballots. They had to yeah. embrace mail-in ballots. Exactly. Perfect timing for Marco Rubio and Bobby Jindal. Uh, I think Bobby Jindal might be, uh, I, I don't remember, Indian, maybe Sikh. I can't remember. Yeah, um, Hindu, well, maybe. I, yeah, I, I don't remember. But... Um, I guess Sikh is a religion, not a ethnicity. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, Sorry about Sikh that. is a religion. That's right. Um, and so they have this postmortem and, and Trump came in and he just knocked off all the, the stars. He knocked off all of them. And what he did is by taking off all the establishment people that were next up, he elevated people like Ted Cruz. He elevated the crazies because the crazies were never part of the establishment. The, and for a good reason, because it, it was Ted Cruz. There's joke after joke after joke of people saying like, everybody hates Ted Cruz. Like Republicans making jokes at the correspondence dinner about how like, everybody oh hates Ted Cruz. Lion Ted. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't because, it wasn't because he was after the deep state, like they all say, it's because everything for him is performative. Everything is everything for him is to get headlines and they all hated that he would come in and he would just disrupt everything and he had these he's a decent speaker he'd have these speeches laid out and everybody hated him well Trump blew that shit up they were going to be nicer uh, they were going to be better on immigration they were going to be better on abortion they were going to be better on uh, on uh, what was the other one you said. What did you say? Oh, healthcare. They were going to. Oh, oh well, healthcare. Oh, yeah, but the healthcare plan that never was. But also mail-in ballots. Mail-in ballots. That's like, the other one. That was all the think tanks were like. And Ronna McDaniel, Ronna Romney was saying we have to embrace mail-in ballots now. Like the think tanks said, embrace mail-in ballots, and we all know what happened with. That. And again, what happened is Trump built a base, and you can't overcome his base. And so it doesn't matter. It's not a collective anymore. It's not, you don't come together and negotiate and, and, and unify behind a candidate, even if you don't like them. Like it's Trump's way or no way. And that's what happened. That's why you guys keep losing. That's why you lose every single year. And it's, it's terrific. I hope he sticks around forever. That'll be great. It's good for us. We have something to talk about and Republicans lose. It's a win-win situation. There's never been a bigger loser than Donald Trump in politics. He, he loses. He won one race out of like the 50 that he's been in. And then and then every election since he's had any power, they just lose. And if we haven't seen any, that's the value of the base, right? Is like it doesn't matter. Even they accept loss after loss. And even when Republicans are pointing out like this isn't working, we're not winning. They don't care. Like, don't, yeah, they can't. Like, that's fine. You cannot. You can't leave Trump. That's the thing. 
you even the people like even the people that would have to would be forced to acknowledge that this isn't working they can't leave trump because if you speak out against trump you're out of the group you're not there anymore you're, you're just done <laughs> it's so crazy you're off the island that's right yeah that's right you uh, you're voted off. That's you, just you like, don't get a rose. yeah, it, Trump can say whatever he want, do whatever he want, and they still have the support. It's just like, I mean, there's so, like you were saying, there's so many examples in the news, but the, the next one was Trump spent all weekend at every rally he was at saying that like Judge Kaplan is out to get him and he requested, you know, to postpone the trial, um, the trial because he has to go to his wife's mother's funeral. And I don't, I think this is like, we should go over it just to fact check it. Like that what happened is Judge Kaplan is the judge. This isn't, I think some people, especially in my comments, when I was like talking to people about it, this is not about the Letitia James civil trial. This is that this is not about Judge Engren. It's about Judge Kaplan and the start of another defamation trial that has to do with E. Jean Carroll. Right, like that's yeah. what this is. It's, Which, it's but, about yeah. the Fox Town he Hall. Remember, it he, last time she had the, yes. Well, and that's that's another fact. He check. doesn't give a so shit about he this. He spent all weekend saying, "Can you believe the judge said I can't go to my uh, wife's mother's funeral?" The judge did not say that. The judge, what the judge said is, "You are being disingenuous because I see here you have a campaign event scheduled." He said that he needs he can't show up in court on Wednesday morning the start of the defamation trial because he needs to fly to Florida. But on Wednesday evening, he has a campaign event in New Hampshire, which as of Saturday night, he was still selling tickets for. So the judge just pointed that out. But the things that people don't understand while Trump's doing this sob story, number one, he's not required to show up. Do you remember the first defamation trial? His lawyers don't want him there. His lawyers yeah. told him not to go. He spent this whole time being like, oh, I'm coming, I'm gonna testify, I'm gonna testify. Remember he was on that golf course in Ireland saying, Scotland, I've gotta leave now. No, it's actually in Ireland, I think, not Scotland, but. Um, Turnberry, Turnberry's his are, course in Scotland. Well, I, I know, but I thought he was in Ireland. I don't know, wherever he was. Um, probably you're probably right you know golf um so yeah and he was saying i've got to fly home now because i've got to go testify and he flew home and guess where he never showed up to testify because it's not trump can't give testimony he will be under oath and cornered into saying so many things <laughs> that yeah, the, he can't answer for so he but he's doing the song and dance again he's saying i need to show up at the trial and this judge isn't letting or saying i can't go to my wife's mother's funeral so just to be clear what the judge said was hey you're the one that scheduled a campaign event for wednesday night <laughs> like so saying you need to travel to florida doesn't seem real number two you're not even required to be at this trial and three in case completely compulsory i mean not compulsory you decide you want to testify because it's up to trump if he wants to present himself and make a defense for himself he gave him an extra day to do so so nothing yeah, none of said, trump's narrative coming about, on monday right yeah he said he coming, said, on, coming monday. on monday if i'll give you an extra day to testify here's the thing there's no way Trump was going to testify. Oh, he can't be under oath. <laughs> let's yeah. Let's keep let let's remind ourselves that You'd the, be a the horrible lawyer. the the lawyer. entire reason that this case exists. He already lost the case once. This case is because once he lost the case and there were rules on what he could and couldn't say, he couldn't continue to slander her. He immediately started slandering her again. So if he goes and testifies. Like, you know who really wants him to testify? Her Jean attorneys. Carroll. Yeah. He, yeah, she's like, great, I'll get all your fucking money. This is terrific <laughs> for me. E. Jean Carroll is, is just sitting back watching this guy bleed himself dry because he can't stand losing. There's there's no sense to this man. There's no he he's not he's not changing any evidence this is not about e jean carroll the original case now this is not about the sexual assault allegations this is about continuing slander and he's gonna lose this and he's gonna do it again and she'll sue him again this like she will sue him until he's gone that's what's gonna happen and maybe he'll write a book and maybe he'll put that in, and then she'll be able to sue and get profits from the book this is this is great for her
<laughs> it's it really is. It's just but like I said, Trump, this is just a long PR campaign because nobody is going to read the court documents or fact check this. I mean, his own supporters. It's just the narrative of, oh, this mean judge won't let Trump go to his wife's funeral. He doesn't even have to be in court, period. <laughs> like, Right. And does he know? Has anybody checked? Is, did Melania invite him to the funeral? Oh, I haven't, come seen, on. I haven't seen her around. Do we know for sure that uh, that she's around? I and mean, that, uh, she'll be at her mother's funeral, I'm sure. I'm sure she's yeah. going. That's, that's the other sad thing is because none of this is true. Like to make the death of your wife's mother, you know, I have take issue with some things Melania said and done, but to be in such grief and have this a disingenuous campaign talking point like yeah this is the most empathy i've ever felt for her this this is probably like my i can change her like my, my soft spot for republican oh, yeah. women because you're gonna fix all you Republic can fix melania too yeah well here's the truth all republican women whether we like them or not they're all victims every republican woman is a victim like they, they're in a patriarchal society they've been conditioned uh, they're they're not taken seriously. Every one of them is a victim. So even as abhorrent as what they say, uh, they're still victims. But uh, that's the entire Melania president or the Melania uh, Trump presidency. I mostly just felt bad for Melania. She didn't want to do that. She didn't want to be there. Or she's like, I don't give a I, like. Who the fuck cares about Christmas trees? I don't want to decorate the White House. Like she had no desire to just be this stand by your man like housewife. She had already largely removed herself from his life. She, they, all reports are they didn't really live together. There's plenty of uh, of reporting that she had basically a live-in boyfriend at the time. I, I've always felt. I like, didn't hear that. Yeah, this, this was true? before oh, Trump okay, was president. Okay, There's, go off, Melania. <laughs> yeah, before Trump was president, there was this better. guy that was the head of security at Tiffany's. Really? And, I did. Yeah, and he also lived in Trump Tower. Okay. And there, yeah, this was this was breakfast like, it was at gossip Tiffany's. Columns. He's a handsome guy. He's a he's a bald guy. She's, look it up. She's gorgeous. Look it up. He's a he's a good looking guy. Um, and and I, I think since the since the presidency, I'm pretty sure he also moved to Florida. Uh, I don't. I don't remember what his name is. Somebody can find it in the. I'll pull up the. It's Discord. like a, have What's it. that? We're like Whitney Houston and her bodyguard with Kevin Costner. What's that? Is that? Oh, it's called the it's bodyguard. Called bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I was like, oh, walked right Stumbled into, right into, that into one. it. Yeah. Somebody in the Discord's gonna find that. I know it. I I believe in them. It's very Melania and the, and the bodyguard. I like it. But and and look, I, that's fine with me. I don't. I don't care about that. I think that happens with a lot of um, powerful. Um, it, couples that are in the spotlight where uh, a public divorce or something can really screw up your image. And so they can, maybe they just, well, yeah, she renegotiated right? the prenup, right? Right. And largely, I think you said this like last week or something, but yeah. And I've always thought largely because if there's anything I've respected Melania for, it's always seemed to me. And I think you said this last week, like she's been trying to protect Baron, her child. Yeah. Yeah. I think so uh where is it which all children should be protected because look look at junior you know what i mean She's, melania is probably looking at junior and yeah. being like i've got to keep this child like, best and and safe. Hope, yeah and she's she's kept him out of she's kept him out of the spotlight gosh damn it i want to really find this this guy's name somebody's got to find that the only uh, the only actually tall trump Right. Yeah, He's and it huge. drives it drives Trump nuts. I know Trump probably Hank doesn't Seamers. want to be photographed next Hank, to him. <laughs> Hank Seamers, S I E M E R S. Hank, Hank Seamers. Seamers. There we go. So you guys can look that up. Look up Melania Hank Seamers, and you'll find all the reporting. And, and uh, there's plenty of reporting from pre-Trump presidency. This was in the gossip columns. So. And and we, that's where I get all my news. Oh it's yeah, from, okay. He's handsome. Yeah, he's a good-looking guy. I see that for her. Okay. Doesn't appear to be wearing an adult diaper, which is a plus. <laughs> Stop. Oh my gosh. Okay. I want to, did you see the post about, um, well, first we could talk about Trump and the pizza boxes. I mean, we'll just go over Trump. So I just, I had to make a post about this this morning because X, this was your I best, X my author. favorite post you've ever put up. That yeah. was so funny. Because it's ridiculous. Yeah. So I just noticed. But you this. did, wait, hold on though. You did a great job on it. Your your commentary was really, really good. You narrativized that well. Because it's insane. And you're, so, look, at, look at Felice trying to take a compliment right now. I she can't. fucking hates this. I hate it. I'm like, stop <laughs> talking to me. 
So yeah, like if you guys don't know, there was a little 10 second clip that came out of Trump holding like five or six pizza boxes or like, or however many pizza boxes it eight. was. Yeah, it's eight. eight. I mean, they're claiming eight because I guess you know that how much makes a pizza. You know how much difference. a pizza weighs. I know what. I just don't get it. But yeah, so he's like standing next to an SUV with apparently eight pizza boxes, and he he's walking towards this line of firemen. It's a ten second clip, but all of MAGA went crazy with this clip, and all across X, it's MAGA people being like, "Look at him carry these pizzas! Like he's handling it so well." <laughs> yeah, they were like, Nobody "If this was like if this, this was Joe Biden, he would he couldn't carry eight pizzas." <laughs> Hundreds <laughs> of people. A 10 second clip about pizza, about Trump holding pizzas and they're like, you see what he's doing here? Like they're so proud of him for being able to hold eight pizzas and walk, you know, 10 yards. So yeah. the people saying, dear leader, that was apt. Uh, that that was very because that, that's how people respond to Trump. Like there's anything he does is hilarious. I've, I've brought this up before, but when, I, when we used to have general conference, which is where like the prophet would speak to us in the Mormon church, a anytime the prophet would say something that was even remotely like not about doctrine, like he might make a, a silly joke, people would talk about it for weeks. Ne they were never funny. It would be something like, I, I, I can't even think of one. Like, talk, let's, let's pick like, uh, my wife puts the vacuum lines and I put my foot on there. She didn't talk to me and then I found out that <laughs> it was because I messed up her lines. And it, it, the crowd would lose it. Just to that, you were ready of Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein. Wh wh why'd you hold that up, Congressman? Oh, well, I forgot to do my little promo of this. What we're talking about here, and I think it's important to mention, this is just some more hypocrisy. Jared Moskowitz is addressing the hypocrisy. Like, during the break, they had to have several breaks because the House GOP in the sham Hunter Biden contempt hearing were screaming and out of turn. And when Hunter Biden didn't let Marjorie yell at him during the hearing and he left, they had to actually stop the hearing because there was so much commotion. So during that break, Jared Moskowitz... <laughs> Held up, held up a blown out picture of Trump and Jeffrey Epstein above his head. He just didn't say a word. He didn't say a word. He just stood for like there. ten minutes. He just in silence held up a giant P Donald Trump Jeffrey Epstein poster. And this is sort of Ben Masellas asking him like, "What was the logic there? Why'd you hold that up, Congressman?" Well, again, uh, I mean, it, she's over there giving a speech, you know, opening the door about pedophiles and grooming and kids and young girls. And I'm thinking to myself, see, they, they just live in a bubble. Uh, and so, OK, we, we, we want to we want to play this game. No problem. Let me let me bring out the one of just a dozen photos of Donald Trump and, and, and Epstein. And as soon as that photo came out. You should have looked at the Republicans. They were like ostriches, each one, like their head immediately went below their desk because, you know, they're all out there attacking Epstein for other people. And they forget that Donald Trump and him were super close. In fact, Donald Trump commented that, oh, Jeffrey likes them really young. Well, how would he know that? Well, how would he know? Well, well, some people are saying, Ben, that, you know, he was there. Uh, and, and so, yeah, look, if that, if that's what they're going to do, OK, I know Democrats want to be better than them and I, I, I want to be better than them and I don't want to sink the hearings into this. But unfortunately, we have to fight fire with fire and, and I'm not going to let them do these hearings where they pretend like the guy that they basically kneel to and take commands from and is in charge of their entire party. Right. Doesn't pal around and didn't pal around with a pedophile. I'm not going to let them get away with that uh, as they as they try to paint Democrats uh, as, as something different. And what I'm hoping is that what I'm hoping Marjorie and these others see is that when they want to go off the rails and they want to, you know, go be below decorum, no problem. I'm going to be there every single time prepared. Again, sometimes you're not going to see these boards that I make because, you know, we will have a regular hearing and I don't need to show them. But I'm going to be ready. And I think that's what they're not prepared for. They're not prepared for Democrats to be this aggressive, this in their face. Um, uh, uh, you know, and that's what I think a lot of the members of Oversight, led by Jamie Raskin uh, on our side, are doing this year, uh, is that we're giving them a taste of their own medicine. And, and what we're exposing is not only can they not handle it, not only are a lot of them like snowflakes, but, but also it's setting them off their games 
in response. Yep, well said. Jamie Raskin and what he's done with the oversight and accountability team, they are all seasoned litigators and amazing, but like watching them develop and become this like well-oiled machine where they're all positioned players and like know their roles and parts, like it's pretty amazing. Jamie Raskin should be proud. He should be a Supreme Court justice right now and probably will be one day, but on his, you know, while he's waiting around, <laughs> he's doing a good job. Yeah, the thing that um, Moskowitz uh, and Goldman have been able to do really well, and um, why do I forget her damn last uh, Crockett. Uh, Crockett, thank you. I just always, why is my thing playing sound? Uh, Crockett does this well. Uh, and, and I think it's something AOC is learning now um, is that the Democrats, during the, when Trump first came in, Democrats are like, we're going to take the high road. But the problem is, is that a lot of people don't like the government, right or left. And so it's it's kind of fun for people to see the right the right trolling the left, and it was fun for people to see uh, these politicians on the left just be outraged, right, and, and get upset and be emotional. That was the triggering thing. When you when you fight back the way that Moskowitz is fighting, instead of being triggered, instead of saying, instead of trying to just point out like, look how awful you are, let them speak and 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 then play their game. Like, let them say the things that they want to see and then play their game. Put it put it up right in front of them. And that's where I've seen that this this version of Congress is doing so much better is they they point out the absurdity where before Democrats tried to just ignore it or like, like stick to the facts, be yeah. professional and yeah, not they, point out like that these people were in the going so low they were in hell. Yeah. Because, yeah, let's 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 keep it real here. Like politics are basically done in segments now people's political views are segments they're they're a 15 30 45 second clip that they see on uh on social media as we're trying to build our stuff by the way quick plug if you're not following our youtube that'd be awesome if you did that the link is in my link tree um and when we post if you'll turn on the notifications when we post things even if you've already seen it on tiktok if you just like it comment share whatever uh that helps us in the algorithm and and we'll actually in the near future allow us to bring you this exact show on TikTok and on YouTube, but we'll show you the video clips and not just the audio clips. So that will make your experience better as well. But as even us, like we're trying to figure this out, we understand that the attention span of the American people is short. And so if you can give them something quickly that's informative uh, and counteracts the the arguments that are being uh, that are being hurled at them from the right, it's really, really effective. Um, and that's what I think that this new Republican Party is or Democrat Party is doing really well with Dark Brandon's team specifically like it, it, Joe Biden, Joe Biden uh, in 2016 never could have pulled this shit off. But they, they understand that they're fighting now fire with fire, but they're doing it in in like in such a clever way where instead of instead of fighting fire with fire, where like the Demo or the Republicans call them marxist and uh and uh communists and p 3 dos instead they do s silly things like just simply hold up a picture and not say a word right they just put it right back in their face and i i'm really proud I'm, I'm a little bit proud lately to be a democrat which i've never been proud to be a democrat but currently i'm pretty proud of being a democrat every time yeah i agree every time i watch an oversight hearing like my pride just swells because they're doing such an amazing job. I And I feel like his name's Robert Garcia, like Representative Robert Garcia is another one. Like it would never have occurred, like he's been so effective, I would say shutting Marjorie down like on the Homeland Committee and things like that. Just saying like every time Marjorie speaks, um, cause he's, you know, like, or right before she speaks to Radler, cause he's an, a, he's a Garcia and she's a green and just saying like blowing up her own tweets, right? Like not trash eager, just saying, I will now quote <laughs> some things that this woman has said. <laughs> just yeah. having his assistant hold them up and be like, here's the awful things that this woman has said. And by the time it gets to her turn, she is so furious that she can't function. I mean, not that she's ever doing anything useful. <laughs> not that she's been functioning that well before. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's time to just point out that these people are not following lines of logic. Like there are one set of rules for their leaders, which is, you know, they said, oh, when Clinton turns up in these Epstein you know in these court documents we're gonna crucify him well keep that same energy for your guy keep that same energy what or is just, 
Sorry, I've, I'm just changing my background, and I, I gave you Vivek for a second while we were waiting, while I was just getting that switched. There was an issue with my background, so I just had to fix that. There's All a, right, sorry. I uh, Next on. next story there. Okay, no, yeah, that's, that's just what... Hold on, let me just go back to my outline. Okay, so that was Jared. Yeah, so I wanted to go over this quick clip of Marjorie. Well, we don't have to... The clip is two seconds, and it's kind of inconsequential, but I just wanted to make the point that she was on... Um, Maria Bartiromo's show saying the same thing, like being asked, what's the evidence that you have about Hunter? And what do you, you know, and she said her evidence, you know, when, cause they, even Maria is consistently just saying, okay, what's the evidence that Hunter did something? Can you tell us what it is? And her, ev her reason that there's evidence said the fact that Joe Biden was called, would call I, well, she means Hunter, but she said Joe. The fact that Hunter Biden would call his dad on the phone in his business meetings shows that he was selling his father's influence. Such a ridiculous point, right, that was directly refuted by Devin Archer's testimony. So, like, I just want, like, this is where they lied about Devin Archer's depot testimony. Archer said that Hunter spoke to his dad every single day on the phone. He also liked to impress people by calling him during dinners just to show his dad always picked up. Archer said they never discussed business. But that's what happens when you do a closed door hearing with Republicans, right? That's yeah. what Hunter Biden, that's why Hunter Biden's saying, I'll do a hearing, but it's not gonna be closed door like Devin Archer's, so you can misrepresent and be disingenuous about the testimony that he gave. I, I honestly have sympathy for Republicans who are frustrated with, uh, with what Hunter Biden is doing. I get it, he is defying a subpoena he is not following the, the rules as set out, but force force their hand, force them to arrest him, force the, force, uh, the courts to make a ruling on how powerful uh, a subpoena is. Uh, f even if you're a Republican, you should understand that what Hunter Biden is doing is he is going to uh, he's going to force somebody at some point to make a ruling that these congressional subpoenas either have power or they don't have power. Not, I don't know. Right now, there's no power. And you can thank the Republicans for that, obviously, because they don't they don't respond to these congressional subpoenas. But whatever whatever side you're on, whatever you want to happen with Hunter Biden, he is forcing us to uh, at least address how much power Congress should have when compelling testimony from people. Exactly. And by the way, I don't think I, I don't think Congress should have the power to subpoena Hunter Biden right now. I don't I don't think that Congress should be able to subpoena anybody until they have evidence of a crime. And and there's no evidence of a crime here that involves Joe Biden. And and you can't subpoena Hunter for tax evasion and for owning a weapon because how many people would you have to subpoena in this country? Like how many people have have avoided paying taxes? How many people have illegally owned a firearm that, like, that's for the judicial system we're not going to pull everybody in front of congress that has done that crime so until there is a crime that's committed i don't think congress should be able to bring people in and have a congressional hearing we waste a, a remarkable amount of time uh, in congress bringing people in for shit that isn't real okay guys someone's saying first of all where are the ops right now we're on jay's backup account so like a lot of people that follow him and would totally total like normally notice that we are live aren't so that's why we're saying please keep tapping the screen continuously during this live share the live with republicans if that you would like to hear from or want us to talk to again we'd love to talk to republicans um but yeah that's what's going on for anyone the who's asking lib, Wrang R lib wrangler wants us to know that the ops are saving america and i'm assuming that they're saving <laughs> America and their little lib safe. Wrangler. Yeah, like, Lib Wrangler. In their, I want to meet Lib safe, Wrangler. <laughs> they're just out there in their safe spaces, saving America one angry live at a time. I think the problem with uh, with most Republicans is they want to come up and they want to yell and and just scream talking points, and we don't really do that anymore. Uh, we've decided that we're going to have real conversations here, so I don't yeah, think that uh, I don't think Republicans love that in good faith but just to address what you you were saying i 
I literally just almost, I forgot. I had something I wanted to make a comment about. Oh yeah, just that. And again, I just want to clarify, nobody's saying, and Jared Moskowitz also said this on the same podcast that of the clip we were just playing. Hunter Biden has very real legal issues, you know, tax evasion issues, issues that involve a firearm, et cetera, et cetera. And he, that is working its way through criminal courts and he will be held accountable and needs to face those. No one is above the law, but there is a judicial system, a different branch of the government that handles criminal cases, right? And so that, and, and civil cases. And that's where Hunter Biden needs to handle his criminal issues, not in Congress when we are, what day, it's January 19th, right? Is it the 15th? That's where um, we're at, four days from a shutdown or? You yeah, know, it's the 15th, yeah. We're about four days from a shutdown. Get excited. Yay, government <laughs> shutdown. Mm. Yay. It's like becoming so normalized, you know, like it used to be like once a year government shutdown talk. Now we're like quarterly. <laughs> the cool thing about government shutdowns is that that means Congress doesn't get paid. Oh, wait, they carved out an exception. So it's only the federal employees that aren't in Congress that don't get paid. I don't know, things like uh, the military. Yeah, the veterans, the border the, patrol. The, the veterans, the border patrol, postal Josh. service. Where's Josh. Okay. Uh, yeah, just everybody who works for the federal government that wasn't elected, that just, Big just shows up every here. day to do their job. Who? Big Block. Oh, Remember, hey, Big he Block. was who we were talking yeah. to on Friday. Oh, of course. When we got course. banned. I'm just saying hi. Big I Block, like you're welcome to come back up if you'd, if you'd like to finish that discussion, by the way. That was not your fault that uh, that I got banned, so I apologize for that. But yeah, like this, this hurts real people. And I, I, I remember, do you remember when uh, the, Trump was talking about the shutdown? Uh, and he had Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi in his office. And for some reason, they just like let the cameras roll for 15 or 20 minutes before they got going. No, tell and, me. I don't remember this. Oh, yeah. And and Trump is just lambasting him, saying, like, I'm proud to shut down the government. I'm proud to do this so that we get my to get border funding. I'm pr and, and Chuck Schumer's just keeps looking like he's visibly shaken. Uh, Trump Trump clearly got under his skin, but he's trying to make the point that like this hurts real people. But Trump and the Republicans, I'm telling you guys, they don't fucking care about you. They do not care about middle class and poor Americans or even upper middle class Americans. They say that they do. And I think maybe some of them in their hearts believe that they do. And maybe that they just don't understand how economics work. And, and that's actually the most likely scenario because I've heard them speak and none of them seem to understand how economics work. But they certainly aren't doing what's in your best interest. Shutting down the government hurts everyday Americans. It doesn't hurt Congress. It doesn't hurt Democrats. It doesn't hurt liberals. It, it doesn't do anything but hurt everyday Americans. And, and, and to tie that to saying we need to close the border, which doesn't solve the problem, uh, and, and to say that like we just need border funding, it's them selling you a bill of goods. It's them saying we want to get our way, and we're, we're so we're so serious about getting our way that we will shut down the government. And the truth of the matter is, they want the government to shut down, and they want it to be over the border, and they don't want Joe Biden to have a win. It, it, it's ideal for them that the government be shut down for weeks while they don't fund the border. And, and if, if they do cave at that point, then if Biden caves, they get to celebrate that as a win. This is 100% political. This has nothing to do with fixing the border. It has nothing to do with everyday Americans. It has everything to do with this being an election year and the Republicans could give a fuck about any of you, about any of us. They do not care. They just want Trump back in office. And most of you are along for the ride, which is sad. That's really sad. There are hundreds of thousands of people who will be hurt by this and you don't care because you want, you think that Donald Trump being in office magically fixes everything. It doesn't. I could not, I could not agree more. Speaking of a, uh... a big, big block. Let me tell you this. Democrats do care about fixing the border. I've offered solutions 
Police has offered solutions. Democrats in Congress have offered solutions. They're talking about it. They're openly saying, can we come together and discuss this? But closing the border is not what we're going to do. Let's come up with a solution. And Republicans are saying no. And they are openly saying that the reason they're not going to do it is because it will give Joe Biden a win. So again, Big Block, I believe that you care about the border. I believe that you think that Democrats don't care about the border. What I'm telling you is that the people representing you do not give a shit about you. They just want Trump to win. That's like all I'm an saying. Intervention. Yeah, it's not about you. <laughs> come on it's up, about the people block. representing you. They don't care about you. It, it, you can come up, come up here and tell us just one thing the Republicans have done for you. Since Trump was in office till now, what have the Republicans done for you? Cut your taxes. The, the taxes we already know didn't keep up with uh, cost of living. So they, and they, they end make, in they 2025. Yeah, they didn't actually make you wealthier because your buying power has decreased. So I, I don't know. I don't know what Republicans are hanging on to. I don't know why they I don't even know why you guys want to go back to a Trump era. It was not better. It wasn't better for you. Amen. It, it, it was it trended worse every year. It, it was trending in the wrong direction. You know, it was year. also not better for Mike Lindell, the pillow enthusiast. I'm sorry, I have to. Michael, no, Michael. bless him. He is in a free fall, and at any moment, because I'm actually like, I don't believe like Trump on paper is a traditional billionaire, like say Jeffrey Bezos is. But like I, you and know, by I traditional you mean actually? A yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> even like all his combined assets, I don't think it probably totals a billion dollars. Um, if you count maybe Jared's two bill, you know what I'd say then sure. But I'm I'm he's definitely I you know has hundreds of millions of dollars. So at any moment, a man who you know Mike Lindell in 2016 met with Trump said I'm all in. I'm gonna use like not just now he's used his money he's made from his business or I mean his personal fortune, but now you know has lost his actual business backing Trump. His last lifeline was running ads on what on, you know, a huge network like Fox, which they announced Friday, they pulled all of Mike Lindell's ads from Fox, one of his last lifelines he was getting business from. Like, where is Donald Trump? This is a guy who what? gave you his personal fortune to help get you elected in 2016. Like, why not come to your friend's aid? He sounds very... Did you see this video of Mike yes. Lindell? First of all, Steve sad. Bannon... You guys, prepare yourself. Steve Bannon actually laughs at Mike Lindell. But just just to give you some context here, uh, and, and just more evidence that Republicans, specifically Steve Bannon, and specifically Mike Lindell, will lie to you. And I've never figured out if Mike Lindell is stupid or a liar. It's one of the two. He is either painfully. No, he's a true believer. I, I, you know, like, right. like Carrie Lake. Like, does he believe all of but, the stuff he's saying? I think he's a true believer. But here's the thing: Fo don't give Fox News credit. Fox News didn't pull these ads because oh, they're yeah. afraid of Mike. They pulled the, the ads liability. because Mike isn't paying for them, because he can't afford oh. to pay his ad agency. They, they've, they've got contact from his ad buyers, and they said. Fox News responded to them and said, when you pay your bills, we'll happily put your ads back on TV. So just listen to Steve Bannon and Mike Lindell pretend this is a poor me situation well, when the truth is Fox will fucking air anything. They just you got to pay for it. Yeah. And if you don't know about advertising, if you never worked in it, it's built in arrears. So they'll let you run ads. You pay for them usually like, you know, net 60 or net 90 you know you have 90 days to pay so like they'll let you like run up an advertising bill like so that's probably what happened he's not paying in arrears but yeah this is mike lindell and his sob story which i <laughs> this is sad hello everybody i wanted to get on here and tell you all the disturbing news fox news has canceled my pillow uh we don't know why we can only uh we can only make a couple of guesses uh maybe it's because uh Lou Dobbs was added over here at Lindell TV to a, this all new lineup we have. And that was just a few days ago. We showed his first interview with our great real president, Donald Trump. Uh, or maybe it's because they don't want my face even on their network leading up to the 2024 election in support of our great real president, Donald Trump. Um, I don't know. Uh, we, we, with this, the details, we don't have, I don't have the details yet, but, uh, all I know is the commercials have been canceled. All the, all of our 
anything with my pillow or Mike Lindell canceled on Fox News. And uh, please help us to support us and and uh, during this time of cancellation. And thanks for your support of Lindell TV. The, I believe this is all about stopping me from talking about the election platforms and, and the elections and this uh, this uh, to, to getting rid of my voice. And uh, uh, but I. I just wanted to let you all know um, that this is a very disturbing. We don't know all the details yet, but Fox News has canceled my pillow. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I'm not laughing, Mike. But seriously, like just pay 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 your bills. But also, yeah. In case you guys don't know, Lou Dobbs was one of the casualties um, during not the Smartmatic. Why can't I suddenly not remember the lawsuit? What was the Fox Dominion law? Dominion lawsuit? Like he was one of the ones that was all up in the discussion and then was let go um, as a result of that lawsuit. And he he had like an interview with Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, no, Do on Lindell was... TV. He was Lou Dobbs interviewed Donald Trump on L Lindell TV like last week, or they aired it last week or something. Yeah, Dob I think Dobbs at one point had the highest rated show oh, yeah. on he Fox Business. Big. He was a monster. He he was big. At they didn't really want to get rid of him, but they had to. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't bring in uh, uh, just under a billion dollars to cover the expenses that they had to pay out to Dominion. I was uh, surprised Maria got kept. Like she must have, Mer Rupert likes Maria. You know what I mean? Cause like when I looked at like who was doing such damage, I I was shocked. Not that like I thought Lou Dobbs could stay, but like that if, <laughs> it's like if Lou Dobbs goes, is Maria not <laughs> like, is she not reach the threshold of what is she saying? Well, ag again, t it goes back to Republicans don't actually uh, care about women and they don't like they don't listen. They they probably don't. That's like, true. When he probably couldn't hear her. Yeah. Yes. That was right. probably their defense in court. They're probably like, what about Maria? And they were like, They're don't like, worry. Who? Our viewers Who? don't. Our viewers don't listen to women. Who? She, her show's just there and we listen when the know. men are she's speaking. They're still working there. They're not even aware she still works there. Yeah. Just, Dominion like, couldn't even counteract it because they're like, that's true. Nobody does listen to her. That's true. That's true. Exactly. They're like, yeah, you're right. She's not doing that much damage. No one can hear yeah, hers women is when really, they speak. Li hers is a free speech issue because she's not uh, t talking to anybody. Nobody's listening to her. But yeah, at any moment, like, why doesn't Donald Trump help this guy out? Help his friend? Oh, uh, I... Could I answer that? Yes. He doesn't please. have friends. He doesn't okay. care about people. Uh, the reason he's not helping Mike Lindell out is because it doesn't help him and it would cost money. And he, he only cares about things that help him and he doesn't spend money on others, only himself. And maybe some other people, you brought this up. Uh, we haven't covered this yet, but uh, when you look at the stop the steal money that was raised, uh, all, this, all this money oh, that was supposed yes. to go towards Great litigation. Article. Yeah, it was supposed to go towards litigation. It was it was supposed to go to legal defenses for stop the steal. It looks like Wait we've till now you get to this article. Yeah, yeah, now we've we've uncovered some of that. Do you want to share some of that? Oh yeah. Okay. So do we want to? Well, no. I mean, you can. Let's open it. I I was gonna. Oh, okay. Actually, Sorry, I'm baffled by when Mike Lindell was talking. I pulled up FrankSpeech.com. This oh, is... I'm a yeah. I have my own account on Frank Speech. Unbelievable. Stuff. I'm all over far right media everybody everybody in every video i i don't know if nobody has told people about lighting like the lighting in every single video is horrendous uh, nobody knows about anti-glare i i don't know who's making their graphics uh, this is horrendous this looks like a bad TikTok stream like a bad one not a good one a bad one yes it's not it's though yes the it's the this, they need more servers the website is bad uh, yes i do agree with that statement i can barely log into my account so this article that jay was talking about is a mother jones article that's another if i could say another publication that deserves like a pulitzer yeah mother jones is if you don't read their stuff it's great but so the the article is basically about the millions of dollars raised by trump world for j6 but was actually paid out to different grifters right so like i'm just i'll get into this so at 4 17 on january 6 2021 while the rioter while rioters battled police inside the capitol kimberly guilfoyle emailed her banker 
<laughs> Guilfoyle, who was a top official on Donald Trump's presidential campaign, wanted to know if a $60,000 payment for short speeches that she and Donald Trump Jr., her fiance, gave at the rally preceding the attack had hit her account. So, yeah, and this is one of my pet peeves. About 1,300 Americans have been charged with crimes for actions related to January 6th. That includes Trump, whose false allegations of election fraud were the main cause. But the insurrection was made possible by another group of people, a web of political operatives like Guilfoyle, who personally profited by helping to assemble and mislead the mob that subsequently attacked the Capitol. These operatives raised funds, rented buses, paid for porta potties and gave speeches at January 5th and 6th rallies in Washington, where tens of thousands of Trump supporters demanded that the election results be thrown out. These actions were legal, and there is no evidence that Guilfoyle other operatives and donors discussed this story. So anyways, this is this article is just about the funds. Hold on, I need to find the part where the funds. Well, do you... David's here. So what? <laughs> hi, David. Come up here and talk to us. It's, we want to talk to someone. Why, David? David is just so for yell instance, at us. They, these people raise money from. This is more. This is just about the things that bother me. This whole article. It's about raising money from the Trump base. People that are giving all of the money they have, and then it being spent on things like sixty thousand dollars for Kimberly Guilfoyle to talk for three minutes or for Alex Jones, he got 170K. Charlie Kirk, 1.25 million to rent buses. Sidney Powell got 100K. Roger Stone got $13,000 for what? New teeth. Do you think that like the MAGA supporters wanted to buy Roger Stone new teeth? <laughs> like. It's it, look, and I, I, I guess I understand. We've heard David say it before. We've heard uh, Lib Wrangler now, who's uh, deep in, in David saying. By the way, Lib Wrangler, if if you think when you said David knows what's up, I'm concerned for you because David's rarely anywhere near reality. But the the point is this: they lie, they lie about what they're going to use money for, and then they use it for other things. You don't have you you don't have a leg to stand on. You cannot complain about corruption. You can't complain about the Bidens. You can't complain about anything because the, the people that represent you lie all the time, right to your face. And that is, that is the, the key indicator that you're actually in a cult. This happened, my cult. It turned out that my cult was lying to people about how much money we had. And they gave their reason, publicly gave the reason that the reason they didn't tell people how much money they had is because then people would stop giving them money. And the people that stayed in the cold are like, that's okay, it's the Lord's will. We're doing this for a greater purpose. Y like, you guys will overlook honestly anything as long as it's your people that are doing it. But then you become unhinged if anybody else does anything that you view as wrong. That's the, th that's the part that we're pointing out here. We know you don't care. We know that. But the reason you don't care is because you're fucking stupid. That's why, like, you're just going to allow people to rob you blind. That's crazy. In what other scenario would you sit back and let somebody rob you blind and think you're the smart one here? Which one? Like, wh when is that? When is that scenario uh, a scenario that's like something to be proud of? Yeah, our guys, we, we got the best scammers. They they told me they were taking my money for a political campaign, and instead Roger Stone got new teeth. And you're like, who cares? It's crazy. Well, it's, I think it's just this article is just a really Mother Jones does great financial reporting. Um, just yeah, this this is a great article, but it, it's not just the MAGA base, right? That like the middle class MAGA base, or it's also billionaires. But the point is just showing like Donald Trump has proximity, let's say, not Donald Trump, but proximity to Donald Trump. There is this cottage industry. And by being a supporter of him, a public one, like InfoWars, like the InfoWars podcast and supporting him, you are essentially showered with money. You know, it, it's there is a financial comeuppance 
for having proximity to Trump. And that's what this is about. Like, David, hold on a second before you start breathing loudly and screaming. Let me just, because I want to make this point. Like, Fancelli, who's an heir to the, if you don't live on the East Coast, the public supermarkets, it's an East Coast supermarket chain, um, had learned from conspiracy theory theorist Alex Jones. So, right, Alex. this is about a billionaire. She gave Alex Jones the 170000 because she believed what Trump was saying. So it's not just, I just, I don't want to put out there that we're saying like oh like you know the MAGA base doesn't know what's going on this is not just this is the average MAGA supporter up to the billionaire heir of public supermarkets that's what we're talking about sorry I'm done now but David you, you can re-request I didn't bring you up I don't have a lot of patience for David today you can re-request but you're going to turn your mic down and you're not going to talk over anybody that's what we're going to do today people are tired of you coming up freaking out not letting anybody talk so you can come back up if you'd like to have a discussion um and you're not going to turn your mic up to level three trillion and yell over people i'll, I'll give you an opportunity to speak debbie said gonna... she's not affiliated with Publix. yes she's the heir to the fortune right. so that's what i'm saying i don't think i'm not saying she's a supermarket worker i'm saying she's going to inherit she's, that fortune she was not a so you weren't saying that she was she's operating not a, register. a greeter at Publix. this may come as a shock to you but you know so fancelli was one of millions of americans who believed trump's election fraud lies what made her unique was that she was a billionaire who was prepared to spend big she's also the one that wrote the a hundred thousand dollar check to sydney powell the Trump teen lawyer who pushed fantastical claims of a vast election conspiracy involving Dominion voting machines, Chinese hackers, George Soros, or the dead Venezuelan dictator, Hugo Chavez. So that was part of more than 16 million Powell, 16 million that Powell, who has since pleaded guilty to misdemeanor charges relating to her role in attempting to overturn Georgia's election results, raised by bolstering Trump's election fraud lies. Six, Sidney Powell raised $16 million. Yeah, look, the, these are all people too that when you look back on what they were saying, they lie, They were lying to you. Like, please remember that these people, th this money that you guys raised and sent to court were all based on lies. That's why they kept losing every court case, every one of them. They, they either didn't have they either didn't have merit they didn't have standing uh there was not jurisdiction there was no evidence there were zero zero cases that had any evidence and they knew that but it was a fun grift and the grift worked and and it was a great grift for donald trump because he got to keep a lot of that money like keep in mind i don't know how it works when his when his payments come out from um e Jean carroll uh, but it, it will be trump supporters that pay off e Jean carroll it will, it will be. It, it won't be Donald Trump. He, for a guy that, I'm going to fund my own campaign. I'm a billionaire. I, I even donated my salary. Well, he sure grifted off you guys a lot. He's made millions of dollars as president. Millions. His companies have stayed. His, his businesses were struggling. His DC hotel was struggling. Mar-a-Lago was struggling. His golf courses were struggling. He elevated his properties because he was the president. These are not like the lib wrangler says because he's smart yeah that's what it is you're, yeah, you're proud is, that you were defrauded yeah he's smart that he you know cool. it's what? true he is smart you know how smart he is he saw millions of fucking dumb people and said those people are stupid enough to give me their money and then he did it and then you guys are like look how smart he is he knew that we were dumb enough to give him our money that's what you're saying right now like he's talking about you you're the dumb, you're the dumb people who keep giving him money. So uh, whatever, like I'm sure to uh, I'm sure to you that seems smart. I, I'm sure that like when that Nigerian prince scammed you out of five thousand dollars, you were probably like, ah, that guy was pretty smart though. You probably still think it really was a Nigerian prince. I get it. You're dumb. <laughs> we get it. You fall for dumb shit. You don't. Facts don't matter. Narratives. We love narratives. We're big on narratives. Trump's a billionaire, so he's going to make us a billionaire. And how's he going to make us a billionaire? All you have to do is send me a little bit of money, and one day you could be me. It's a fucking scam. This is how all scammers talk. All these, all these rich scammers. Uh, Andrew Tate, like, oh, you can be like me. Just enjoy or enroll. Baller in, University. Uh, Hustlers University. <laughs> or, yeah, and you're like, whatever. sign me up. I'm going to be like you. And so, and you don't have any money. You guys, you're all, <laughs> you're all the same amount of broke, maybe a little more broke than you were before. 
but you keep thinking that like one of these scams is finally going to pay off. What's going to happen if he's president? Did everybody get rich? Nope, that didn't happen. You you're just you guys are just dumb. And and I feel bad. I don't I don't want you to be dumb. I would like things to go better for you. I'd like you to keep your hard-earned money and let that douchebag spend his own money. Hi, Brad. You could come up here, or you've changed your name to Thumb Thug. <laughs> Brad Earl, you can come up here and talk. I miss you. I kind of like Thumb Thug. That's actually I know. That's Brad Earl's a I cool like guy, that. actually. I mean, I I think we're... I, I don't want to say we're friends. That's a little presumptuous, but... We, S we somebody with that point. name... Uh, somebody with thumb thug they're not sending their money to to donald trump yeah they're oh yeah brad's that. not he's a li he's a libertarian and he's intelligent did we do you think we hurt david's feelings that he ran away because he got because we didn't want to hear him pee or whatever he was doing he was probably <laughs> upstairs his mic is so his mic is turned up so loud that he was probably upstairs and his mic was in the garage and we were hearing the water running from from up no there. his daughters are around he's a girl dad right oh Brad? i'm a girl yeah dad. just like you i was that's why i told you he's also a girl dad yeah he's a I had good a, dad too i had a funny night with my with my daughter last night she's she's been sick but uh she was just she was just sitting there Tap she didn't talk screen, to me guys. for a little while 200 k because her mom yeah you know, obviously she's not with her mom and she just loves her mom and uh so she was mad for a while and then she she always just will just come up and be like i'm sorry i just really she her apologies hurt my feelings still she's like i'm sorry i just like mom better i'm like i get it that's fine you like mom better and then she's like but i do like you and i said why do you like me and she goes i like you because you have hair in places that girls don't i was like cool she's like you have hair on your face <laughs> on your legs on your boobies i was like thank you that is i that is as a second guy. grade teacher i think like one of the conversations i had the most with kids is like okay if if you want to make a comment on someone's appearance and it's not something they can change in the next two minutes then don't say it out loud <laughs> somebody we have not taught my daughter that we may need to tell her yeah that. that's I, that's yeah, how you should it frame it it like, may be time because uh, they was... just yell out whatever they see it's like the rudest most horrible thing you know they'd be like why can't our music teacher has warts and i'm like no like we're not gonna say that we're not gonna say that when we see her are we <laughs> music teacher. like that's not what we're gonna do <laughs> that's pretty funny I like that. Yeah, my daughter, uh, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that about children is that they do tell you the truth. And I think when when a child tells you the truth about something you're insecure about, I think it's like a good reminder that they're just pointing out something they saw. They're not judging you. And it's a good reminder to rem to remind yourself of that. Like, we all do look a little bit different and that's OK. And my daughter reminds me of that regularly, that I look a little bit different and not perfect. And I appreciate that for her. I was looking for my next clip I wanted to play, and I just thought, I just saw one that I never made it. I think this is just for you. You, How do you feel about Senator Mike Lee? He's, is it, he's just, he's just the fucking worst. Uh, I have, yeah, yeah even, like, time. even the Republicans in Utah that vote for him hate him. He, he almost this got is another that independent that Romney endorsed. Do you remember? Whoever like, Mike Lee's um, opponent was, Mitt Romney's like, I will not endorse Mike Lee. Like, Evan. Yes, Evan. Evan. I don't know his last name, but yes, his name was Evan. He That's had run for president. He's not. Re he's actually a Republican, but he just ran as a Democrat. Um, no, he ran as an independent. Yeah, we, but like the Democrats yeah. endorsed him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, exactly. yeah. So he ran in place of, of the Democrat as an independent. What? McMullen. Evan McMullen. Thank yes, you. Yes, McMullen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah but, he's a senator of Utah, and uh, he's... Ted Cruz's best friend from law school. Mike Lee, Mike Lee was like, he was kind of like a, a great hope for Utah. They, he kind of rose out of the tea party and he's become just somebody who, who will take like the worst possible position. And he's done nothing for Utah for every, everything anybody can say about Mitt Romney, what they hate when Mitt Romney was a Senator for Utah, Utah got more. Like it was a better, Utah was a better place because of Mitt Romney. Mike Lee does not make Utah a better place because everybody in Washington hates Mike Lee. And Mike Lee consistently, because he's such an anti-spender, there's, there's often times that Utah needs federal money. I mean, we, they yes. rely heavily on the Colorado River, especially in the southeastern corner of Utah. 
they they needed Mike Lee's help. They needed Mike Lee's help to protect uh, a, a bunch of uh, land that uh, Obama wanted to make protected, the Bears Ears. And and by the way, I I, I as as a Democrat, as a liberal, I thought that was massive government overreach. And when he did that, it hurt. It hurt small, like a small town farmers. It hurt a lot of people when he did that. And Mike Lee could get nothing done because everybody in Washington hates him because he just he just is a cog in the will. And Mitt Romney got a lot of things fixed, including that he he was the Romney was the one that pushed for, for that to be undone. And Trump got that done because of Romney, not because of Mike Lee. Despite Mike Lee yeah. kissing his ass all the time, Romney was a very effective senator. And Utah is used to having effective senators. Romney replaced Orrin Hatch, who was yeah, who was the guy for yeah. yes, oh yeah, like yeah, every it, committee that mattered, that man was chairing. Like yeah, Orrin Hatch was a four. It becomes you know like someone said like the house is about being young blood learning to craft legislation and the senate is about i've been in washington a while and it's about who you know if you yeah. want funds directed to your state if you want a bridge if you want you know public works projects of any kind you have to play the game like you're right orrin hatch put on a clinic then they had mitt romney and then there's mike lee who decided instead of following these two amazing examples of how to be effective in yeah. washington but still above well, as not corrupt as you could be for a Republican, like, you know, I'm going to, I've decided to emulate Ted Cruz. Yeah. And, like, that's I'm just going to be hated. Exactly. Uh, and, and when and it, he's, he did and when the whole endorse Trump. Like, I was recently watching clips all weekend of 2018, Mike Lee, who was screaming to anyone that would listen, you know, uh, and 2016, Mike Lee for Ted Cruz, that Trump was a fraud, right? Yeah. And I was watching all those old clips of Trump's a fraud and he's same thing like Lil Marco, hat in hand, we love Trump. <laughs> like it's unreal, these people. David. Mi amor. Can you turn your can you yeah, turn your sorry, turn your mic down? Turn your mic down. Turn your mic down. Turn your mic down. Way down. If I can hear you breathe, it's too loud. You're so a. Go ahead. Well, I I thought it was disrespectful. It's all the way down. Police was trying to talk, and you're just out there like turning on water. Nobody wanted to hear that, and it was disrespectful. Go ahead. What do you want to say? No, my what my 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 fucking internet's fucked up, dude. I just couldn't hear that good. Uh, well, I mean, you guys were talking about what we spend, like buying merchandise or helping out Mike Lindell and stuff like that. Like, it doesn't bother us. That doesn't bother us. That's not what we were talking about. We were talking about what, you donations. Were saying, he, no, we were uh, talking about the off donations. Of people's... Hold on, hold on. Let me. Yeah. We were talking about donations for Stop the Steal, um, and what they were advertised as, and what it, what it, where the money actually went. We know. No, no, you know, but not everybody knows. Look, dude, you don't have to critique everything. I mean, what do you mean? yeah, sure, but I mean, yeah, like the other day was, was it you guys? I, somebody was trying it, to fact don't... check us on Banana Republic. That was you guys. That was. That was you guys. Yeah. On. A, we don't give I know a you, fuck, I know you, dude. I know that's like know. our slang. It's like that's like a slang, dude. I you're just trying to fact say, check a slang. Hold on, it fact checking. We were we were explaining so where weird. the term came from. So just when we are like talking about the historical, like here's where this term came from. That's not fact checking. But David, if you're using Banana Republic, the, the point of that was that uh, Republicans use Banana Republic as this wholesale way to say that things are corrupt. Because the problem is none of you guys can tell us what's corrupt. You have no evidence of any any sort of corruption, and you guys misuse words all the time. The problem that we that what we were true. doing, I'm not done. What we were doing is making fun of the fact that you guys will believe anything as long like it, you don't need evidence you don't need but you look facts. stupid doing it that's the thing i'm just yeah saying. you do look stupid doing it i agree no you look you look stupid trying to fact check us on banana republic like it doesn't matter i when wasn't you guys fact are going checking thing, i was mocking david i was mocking. yeah I, I just think it's funny because like a banana republic is just a screwed up fucking government that's no it's that's not a See, banana you're it's using it up. wrong again i i think words matter it's not using it wrong it's it's a slang dude it's Shut not up. it's not slang it has a it has a historic like it means hey something. yeah it has a historic value it was made up a long time ago it's not a slang word yeah, it means dude, something 
The, you, yeah, it the, does the only mean reason something. You th to, Just, the only reason you think it's slang is because you also don't know what the fuck it means. And so you think... No, when you don't, it's a slang. When you think, oh, it's hold a, on, you think... I know, but when you misuse words... Yeah, I watched your guys' whole spiel you, on David, 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 I told you that if you're going to... But I don't know. Here, David, if I, I remember you educate, educate. Shut me. the fuck up! I told you, if you're gonna come up here, be respectful. Don't talk over people. Uh -huh. You're losing your goddamn mind, David. You're dude, I haven't even been on here for like since last time you're, I was on here. David, with you. I'm you still talking, talking about, dude. I'm still talking. I've been on vacation. I'm still, I'm still talking. You, it's it's your turn when I'm done, okay? People are okay, tired of you. Like you're up here criticizing us because we're pointing out that people are grifting off of maggots. Just, Just like a shell company. I'm not done, David. Shut up. It's a slang, buddy. Okay, take care of this, Jen. Take care of the mute button, would you? Because David has no impulse control. David, it's like dealing please with a toddler. act like you've been there. We, you know we what are I mean? pointing out, David, that people are grifting off of MAGA, that they lie right to your faces. They, they tell you they need money for things. They don't use that money on those things. They spend the money on themselves. It, you get rich being a MAGA grifter. That's the only point we're making, David. And if you don't care, that's fine. But that makes you stupid. You're muted. You feel sad for us or something, dude. And it's yes, weird. I weird. do. It's yeah, sad. I, it really is sad. That's what I didn't get. It's like, it's like for us, we're rooting for the country, the world. The all, you know what we most no, of us believe. No, okay? you're not. You're rooting. But for you Trump. know what we believe. You know what we believe. You though. believe so in just, Trump. Stop trying to autocorrect me and just hear me out for a second, okay? Look, I we believe in Trump. We believe what he says. Blah blah blah. Okay, we believe a guy. Okay, call it cult, whatever you want to call it. I don't give okay. a fuck what anymore. What you want to call it? But that's what we believe in, dude. And yeah, and so that's that's him. fine. That's it. That's the problem, David. The problem is no. You, that's not no. The, no you've David, got it mixed up. Now, now I'm going to I'm going to respond, up. David. The problem is you Wasn't believe down, in okay. a person. You guys have you you actually don't believe in any sort of ideology. You have no nope. principles. You just believe in that guy behind you, and that guy no. behind you is doing nothing but scamming people. He just Why scams and you don't care because so you believe in him. I know it doesn't. Just like you can cult, exist, we don't like, care. Just like oh my god. This is crazy. I Wait, no, I want to tell you why I care. Because right now, the middle class and lower, that's thats what pulls at my heartstrings. Is like we're always talking about the consumer price index. Prices are rising. We can barely afford to buy things. Are but I don't believe zero? you guys. No, but listen to me. We have zero buying power. I don't. Listen, these are just numbers about the economy. We have zero buying power in this country, Republicans and Democrats alike. And I don't want the little buying power and the little money that anyone has going towards stop the steal and then hearing that it went to for roger stone to get that's our some, freedom to get veneers <laughs> that's our freedom if we want to but it we didn't want to go, it went to roger stone to, okay so David, i'm just saying I, I agree it's your freedom but why why don't your people just tell you the truth why do you think they don't say we need this money we, to pay when you wait, guys hold on david david wait till the end of sentences brother okay okay, okay like why don't they just tell you the truth of what they're going to spend the money on why do they lie to you first Sorry, just wanted to change my background. Um, well, I mean, like, okay, for instance, uh, Steve Bannon, when people bought the bricks, okay? No, no, no. And, I'm, I'm not asking for an example. No. I'm asking for a, a, just an honest answer from you. I want to know. I'm David, trying to say we don't see it the way you see it. No, no, no. Well, D David, I, it doesn't matter how you see the it. The government may. David, we don't see it on, that way. Hold on, David. Do they, did they campaign on we're going to pay for Roger Stone's teeth? We're gonna pay for a bunch of buses. We're gonna give Dude, Charlie Kirk one point two million. We don't care. Gonna, I know. I know you don't care, David. That's not the question I'm asking. I'm asking you why you think they have to. No, lie. they didn't. They didn't run on that. They I'm didn't run asking. On that, no. So why do you think they lie instead of just tell you the truth? Because when when they said that we need help to get this accomplished, we didn't we didn't buy stuff saying okay, where's the budget? We want to know exactly what's being I know, spent but on I'm what. I'm asking you why. So shut you, the fuck up. No, dude. I'm asking you why you think they lie. I'm not asking about dude. your opinion about why you got. No, it's me. not I'm my opinion. It's a fucking lie. fact. You you care about facts, Mister Fucking I do care facts. About, I do care about. That's facts. a fact. And the fact is, they didn't tell you. That's a fucking mean, fact. David, calm down. The fact is that's a fact, David, I'm, I'm David, perfectly calm. David, this is the crazy thing. This is why I say you're losing it. You have become a losing person. it. I've been off of TikTok have, for like fucking 12 days. Sh pretty much. You've become a person who cannot answer the question that is asked you. No matter what question I ask you, I told you, you three go, times. Oh, no, no. So I'm going to ask you one more time. 
why do you think they i'm not asking you if you care david i'm not asking you about what how okay, you feel ahead. or how trump's people feel i'm asking you why do you think they don't tell the truth i don't <laughs> it's not that they're not telling the truth it is did That's they tell you they were going to do not. that no, you don't have to, dude. You no, don't have I to know fucking you don't like, have to, David. I know. Again, don't run from this. It, what would you? Saying, well, okay, David, what would you like him saying, to do? I just, I'm, I'm going to go buy some you, teeth with David, this money so no, I look on, good. David. No, no, no. When no, I'm no, fucking no, no, campaigning, no, no, no. Shush, shush, Would that be better shush, for you? Shush, shush. This is shush, what I'm shush. saying about you, David. You're incapable now. Of, you've become a person who's incapable of answering the d direct question that I'm asking you. I'm okay, they should tell us the truth, Jay. I'm asking you. No, I'm asking a question. Why do you think they lie instead of just tell the truth? Um, I think that their intentions are to look good and do, I mean, do you think they, if they live their the life? Do you think if they get motivated? The truth, to, do you think if they told the truth, people would give them less money? Well, I don't think there's a lie being told, though. Man. Do you think if they told the truth? Show me the lie. Money, do you Show think me the lie. if they told you where the money was going, David? Show me the if, fucking lie. David, do you think if they told you? You can't. David. Do you think if they told you that $13,000 was going to fix Roger Stone's teeth and 1.2 million was going to go to Charlie Kirk and 60,000 was going to go to two different speakers? Do you think fucking they would, feeds the agenda? David, what are you talking David, about? Hold on. Hold on, sweetheart. You've lost it, dude. You are a, you you are a shell of who you used to be. You cannot even wait for questions to finish because it upsets you so much. I'm not even upset. Why, David? Do you think if they said that they would raise less money? Uh, no, because Charlie you, Kirk is part of the movement, and that's not, having that's not my good, question. A good, again, having a good grill, see again, you and looking become, good for cameras. You have part become of a person, David, oh. who's incapable of ask, answering the question that you're asked. Do you? Yeah, are you going to donate to Joe Biden? Do you think no? Do you, you want to schedule, David? I'm shut up, do. dude. See, this is what I'm saying. You are unable to stay on top. I'm of trying it. to understand. You, no, you're not. You're trying to shout over me, and I've asked the same goddamn question. 15 times and you still can't answer i said sure so i said sure that maybe maybe some of the spending they do they told the truth yeah i think every okay, fucking that's politician why they're not that. telling you the truth because they want to lie to you so they make more money but that's not a lie dude that's not a lie if you say, say hey charlie kirk we're gonna say, give you fucking two million bucks because you're gonna be fucking fighting like hell for us it's part of fucking promoting yourself and shit what that's the fuck not are you what they talking paid about him for it's not what they paid him for all right, what'd they pay him for? They paid him for uh, to organize buses. Okay, so they, they put it under a different descriptive, whatever, yeah, they, he's, they he's said fucking they part were, of the fucking but agenda. they said they were raising money for legal defenses. Okay, none of, none and, of these and Charlie which, Kirk being which, out there fighting for him on camera, as popular as he is, is good PR. So it, shut the fuck up. It's not a legal defense, David. Look how- It's part of the whole look, fucking look, thing, look dude. Become, dude. You're a mess. You have no, I don't see. I don't see it the same way you do. To be, you're I don't so understand angry. what you're. You, you I don't understand to, what you're mad about for us. People I don't understand. To, people lie to your face, and you go online and defend them. The people that are. Well, I think stealing, you're being lied to. The bro. people that and, are stealing from you, and the people around you, you go on every day and you get heated, and defend them. It's crazy. I've been off like here for the, twelve days because I've been sick stock, as fuck. It's Stockholm because of California. Syndrome. It's Stockholm syndrome, David. The people that are actually abusing their voters, you're up there defending them. It's crazy. No, look, well, I love every fucking one of those guys, most of them. I know, until they say something hey, bad and, about Trump. No, and then they're no even Roger Stone when he talks shit about Trump. I like Roger Stone. I think Roger Stone has been monumental for to our politics for fucking ever. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's true. He, or, he, uh, he, he was there during Nixon. Uh, he lied about Nixon. And by the way, uh, remember when Nixon uh, was was caught? Remember, he was guilty, right? You agree Richard Nixon was guilty. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't you know, give a you know fuck. But Rogers, as I learn about you know him more, you know he did Rogers, some cool You know what Roger too. Stone did? Roger Stone, when he was working with Nixon, said, hey, look, we're, we're going to lose. So when we lose on election night, we're going to go out there and we're going to say that we won. We're going to claim victory early. And then we're going to fight in the courts and we're going to create even fake sets of electors and we're going to try and overturn this election that's what he that's, no what, that's, that's what he proposed 
with Nixon. These are his words. There's no such thing as a big director, David. Though. Dave, these are his words, and this is a stupid argument that you make. It's one of your dumbest. Um, and now, uh, remarkably, <laughs> remarkably, right now. remarkably, Trump did the exact like same Danny thing. Willis. But you don't care about that. You don't care about anything because you're in, David, you just want so badly to be right that you have become like uh, not even a, I used to enjoy you you're the most unpleasant person that comes up here now you come up Dude, angry. you're you're unhinged. you come up like, angry you I'm come up angry, angry. you come up angry every single time and you're defending people who are stealing you're like we don't care if people steal as long as they like trump that's not stealing you're it's you're just stealing. calling it that no you're just what, calling it that uh, i'm Bannon the trump supporter stealing? not you steve Ban what did steve bannon get no. in trouble for no, Steve Bannon wasn't stealing. Um, then why, so, wait, wait, what was he doing then? Yeah, see, now I thought you didn't want to talk about Steve what Bannon. I tried to break then? my prayer there. What was so, he doing? So when you're paying $10 for these bricks, and um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and there was a big whole controversy over that, and I don't have fucking. There's not a big controversy. Right he didn't build yeah, a fucking wall, and it. he took the money and pocketed it. He stole the money. No, I okay, but look, but the government, the government, this did not come from people saying I feel ripped off about my ten dollar brick. Yes, this it came did. from the government. Wait, no, it no, did not. Yes, it did. No, it did not. David, there were thousands of complaints. Thousands of people submitted complaints to the government. That's not what this was. Yes, this it was, did. No, That's, this was a weaponized know, government. David. Yes, I do because I've looked it up plenty of times. Then, then how do you not know that there were thousands of complaints? There was nobody protesting thousands. his bricks before thousands. he got charged. Thousands of people had nope. complained. Pro nope. No, they weren't out in the streets protesting. They there was people protesting, but not the people that brought the bricks. David, people protesting about him doing it. David, no, thousands you got it backwards, complaints. Jay. Look it up. I thousands. got internet. Look right now, right? Look it up. I've looked it up, David. Thousands. So have I. Even many, many David, times. Even if it, even if there were zero complaints, your your defense is it's okay to steal from people. No, they got hit. So there was a lot of problems logistic wise. I'm yeah, building like these fucking private build a, walls. Like you can't build a private wall along on federal land. Yeah. And do you think yeah, so is I, Steve Bannon so stupid that he didn't know that? How stupid no, is Steve uh, Bannon then? No, no, is, no, no, So no, your no. argument is everybody that was involved was too goddamn dumb to know they couldn't not, build a wall. Not, That's not, not at all. They, no, they're, they're, no, it's your two arguments. They're either thieves or they're stupid thieves. Which one no, okay, is it? So my, my argument is it's the government that came after him. It wasn't the guy that said, hey, he ripped off my $10 brick. Yes, it, that guy. Well, who cares? Let's pretend that you're right. It, it does no. matter. It do, it why? Context matter, my friend. David, did he build a wall? No. Did he pocket that money? Uh, did he spend it on things that weren't a wall? I forgot how, I forgot how the money all got distributed. Wall? No, not all of it went to him. He, did he spend it he on went things on the yacht that weren't a wall? A few things, but, did yeah. he spend it on things that weren't a wall? We do not give a fuck. It's called fraud. I know you don't care, David. That's the point. David. You have become a person who does not care. Guys, tap steal. the screen and follow Jay's backup. I know, but you Donald don't understand. Trump, you're cool with it. You, I you do don't understand. understand. David, you are, you are not a difficult person to understand. You spend all this time on, saying, you guys, we do understand. You're so if you want to go throw down you don't care $2,000 on commit, a craps you don't table, care is that okay? When people commit crimes, is that okay? as long as they do it in the name of Donald Trump, we get it. We, we believe understand. in the cause. We believe in the cause. I know. Nobody, we all, we all know you believe it, David. Nobody's yeah. arguing so, that you don't believe it. We're arguing that it's dumb. And I'll spend my money on whatever the fuck I want. You can. You, know I mean? you can. But you're supporting criminals over and over again. That and I say that about you. For you. I guess. If you support anybody on the Democratic side, you're definitely supporting a, a criminal. That's why right. it's Democrats for Trump now. What 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 criminal am I supporting? Because Democrats are changing Trump, and that's a fact. That's stupid. What, David? What it's not criminal, stupid. David, what criminal fact. am I supporting? You don't like facts. What criminal am I supporting? Joe Biden. What crime, what crime did he commit? Oh, come on, dude. We all oh, know. Come on, dude. The, you just got to, even though there's no evidence, you just got to believe. What crime? Name the crime. Okay. Uh, uh, bribery. I mean, bribery Who did he bribe? another country. Who did he bribe? We, we're we're Who did he still bribe? in the fucking Who did he bribe? increase. Who did he bribe? So. Who did he bribe? Uh, China bribed Joe Biden, most definitely. What, okay. How, that's what's what we the think. Evidence? What's, that's the evidence? The, uh, that's, what's the well, evidence? It's, it's, what's it's the evidence? What's the evidence? Still. What's the evidence? Oh, you better believe when Trump gets what's in there. What's the evidence? Biden's going what's down. What's the evidence? There's lots of evidence. Okay, There's name the, one piece of the evidence. Money, the money trail. No, one money, specific th piece of evidence, David. Okay, there's there's lots of uh, checks from China. To who? Went shuffled shuffled through Hunter to his brother uh -huh. to Joe Biden. Yep. Yes. Yeah, there's two of them. And are how there, do you think money washing goes? 
that's not money washing. But David, <laughs> is there is there a reason? Yeah, there's. Is there a reason on Joe Biden's side? Is there a defense for why that money came to him? Oh, uh, you mean through the shell companies or yeah, for David, fucking his you, mortgage David, or whatever? David, if I give I got my internet right now. David, if I give you two hundred thousand dollars and then you give me back two hundred thousand dollars, did that help oh, yeah, me? Yeah, alone, whatever. Yeah, I yeah, know. Here, here's the no, thing. No, 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 sh- no, 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 David, you don't get to play anything. Look at me. Put your. I, I will. I will end. I will end this. We're gonna have a discussion. Get, no, put your computer away. We're, We're gonna have a discussion. Fucking put end your computer it, away and look at Guys, me. tap the screen while they're away, having and a look discussion. At me. We're gonna have a discussion. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you ADHD brain anymore? is gonna pay attention for two guys. No, or I'm yeah. not gonna keep platforming. So let's have a discussion, David. Fucking if, player, I, bro. if you give <laughs> cowards run, just so you guys remember, I'm not running. that's You're David to kick me out, dude. running. This is David right here running. When I asked a direct question, I asked David if I if I give you two hundred thousand dollars and you give me back. Two hundred thousand dollars. How did I benefit from that? Well, if <laughs> if uh, the money, if, you know, because if the money is going through a no, relative somehow, I don't care how yes. you got the money. Yeah, bribery's done all kinds of ways. David, David, shut up, dude. If I give you two hundred thousand dollars and you yeah. get two hundred thousand dollars from China and give me back mm-hmm. two hundred thousand dollars, how did I benefit? Because the fact, okay, so let's just say that you orchestrated me getting the 2000 in the first place, okay, the 200000 If you orchestrated me getting the 200000 in the in the first place, yeah. okay, and yeah. and China pays me. So we agree okay? that, that's we, agree bribery. that we don't know that that's true yet, but let's just say for this example that I, I was the reason that you got 200000 from China, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying? Okay, but I already gave you $200,000 and you're just paying me back. So how did I benefit? Because it went to brothers and other people that. But how did actually... I benefit? What's the bribe? What was the bribe well, for, David? The the bribe was for the family and originally in the first place. What family? No, no, it came to me. We're talking bribery about doesn't have to go directly to you. Hello. Wait, you, okay. Well, then, then what's the? Crime? What do you mean? Okay. Why are you confused about it? I'm not confused about it. I'm That's confused. not how bribery I'm works. Dude. Bribery doesn't have to go direct to the source. You're a fucking idiot if you think that. Well, I'm wondering why Joe Biden would bribe people to just to get his money back, to get even money. It's not just to get his money back. It's called enriching your family. It's called power and everything okay, else. Okay, where's the evidence that Joe Biden made it? Uh, We're, we are wait, playing wait, 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 through wait, wait, all wait, those Wait, 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 wait. I'm David, I understand that your answer is that you don't know yet. So let's just we don't know. Saying, you don't know. either. So let's ju- so I'm asking you. Well, you're convinced of it. So I'm asking you, David, what's the evidence that that China bribed Joe Biden? And what did Joe Biden give China in return as a well, okay, by so the way, during the, the time during this time, Joe Biden, not the sitting vice president, not the president, just a regular ass citizen. So he got no, he China to two hundred thousand dollars for <laughs> what? What was he going to give them in return, David? Okay, so uh, Joe Biden wasn't supposed to run in the first place. What was That's he going not... to give them in return, David? He political favors. What political favors? Lots of political favors. What political favors? Name one. There's, what there's... did he give them in return? Oh fuck, dude! I don't. I don't remember everything they did. Okay, they benefited China. China. One, infrastructure. Right? The infrastructure deal. What about the infrastructure, infrastructure deal? bill? You don't think all the all the batteries and all the plastics being made over there um, be highly benefit China? Okay, take away from the private individual wait, to be build out infrastructure wait, for charging stations wait. and stuff. What are you talking about? Infrastructure bill is all about China. Yeah, the the infrastructure bill is all about China. Most definitely. So us just spending billions of dollars. That's what Joe Biden to decouple from China. It's probably the only <laughs> it's thing not to Joe decouple Biden. from it's China. The, it no, benefits China. What are you talking about? No, you're misunderstanding. It's actually I'm not at all. No, let me just. I was listen. I was just reading an article about this this morning. Is it like when you hear the Republicans talking about in the debates like decoupling from China? Joe Biden actually right now we have a smaller case study in real time of that, which is China is trying to currently flood the market with cheap parts that these new factories we're building on American soil are going to be producing in order to undercut them and put them out of business because Joe Biden with these factories that are being built in the infrastructure deal and the Chips and Science Act are actually undercutting China it's not the the batteries hey it's the opposite of what you're saying not the batteries, not the components to build David, these chargers. It's the opposite the, of what you're saying. Not, no, no, no. Not the batteries and not David, the components David, to build these incor- chargers. You're incorrect about same, what you're saying. Same thing with molds. You know how many molds are, are done outside the U.S.? David? 
<laughs> You're misunderstanding. The infrastructure you don't you're just pointing out in the Chips and Science Act is doing the opposite. It's undercutting it's China's not. business. It's yes, not the it components. Is, the components David, that go inside these electric cars. Char- You're not right the, about this. The it's components, the components sense. that go inside the electric uh, car chargers and the battery operations do this uh, infrastructure bill pushing us towards electric energy. Yes, most definitely benefits yeah, China. Yeah, and the, and with the end goal, David, of out like because China was building out their infrastructure quicker than us. So the idea of building so out take the, away from the private industry. Shut up, David. Gotcha. Shut up. So the, inf- the the infrastructure bill. Democrats, uh, government control. Be quiet, David. When others are speaking, this is crazy. You're a toddler. This is why I say you're losing your mind. Because when somebody else speaks, you get so enraged that you. I was just to highlighting talk. two Shut things. Up. Shut up. Go ahead. Not when I'm talking, just be quiet. David, you gotta make it there, there we go. There we go. He still talks. It's crazy. David, the whole point of this infrastructure bill was because we were being out, uh, outpaced by China. By the way, uh, the very thing that your Lord and Savior Donald Trump campaigned on, that China's infrastructure was better than ours and that he needed to fix, that he was going to spend all this money on infrastructure and fix it, he didn't do a goddamn thing. So Biden came in, and this is why he had bipartisan support, is because Biden came in and he offered an infrastructure bill. David, I'm still talking. This is crazy, dude. You are a toddler. Biden came in and he said, I'm going to do a bipartisan infrastructure bill. And the the way that the funding works is that it goes to the states for projects in each state. And those states, yes, sometimes it makes sense for them to use things that are manufactured in China. But the end result is that we don't have to rely on China. That's why we're building the infrastructure so that we can make things here at home, which is why right around the time we signed an infrastructure bill, we also signed the CHIPS Act, and he is doing everything he can to empower unions and manufacturing so we can bring some of these jobs back to America so we aren't reliant on China. What you think is that anything like this hurts China. This is not a good deal for China. So for you to say, so for you, so for you to say that this was a bribe, that he took, he made zero dollars. He loaned his brother 200 grand and then got that $200,000 That's just back. one example. You said bring one example and you got mad about two it. examples of direct money going to Joe Biden and both of them were loan repayments. So again, there's two examples. You don't know both how them, the fucking both system them, works. Two, both of them are loan repayments. Joe Biden made zero dollars, you idiot. zero dollars and zero cents. That's how much you think the war dumbass, efforts people don't get rich. That's how much. Get that's rich. how much. That's how much your <laughs> dumbass politicians who say I thought you're educated guys. That's how that wrong you're, you guys. Mute him again. Shut up when I'm talking. That's how dumb your politicians are. That they think that they have a case and there are zero dollars and zero cents tied to Joe Biden. Now, when you can show me, yeah. David, when you can show me a single solitary cent that benefited Joe Biden, where Joe Biden made any money at all. We can have a discussion, but until then, you don't have a case, which is why even Republicans at this point are saying, yeah, this impeachment's not going to work. We don't have any evidence. And I just want to debunk further what David was saying. Like, this is just an article because he announced this during the State of the Union. Biden requires infrastructure projects being created from the infrastructure bill to use Um, steel and iron, among other things that are solely made in the U.S. The Biden administration is taking a step toward ensuring that federal dollars will support U.S. manufacturing, issuing requirements for how projects funded by the $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure package source their construction material. Okay. New new guidance requires that the material purchased, whether it's for a bridge, a highway, a water pipe, or broadband internet, be produced in the U.S. So I just, David, that's why I'm saying don't die on that hill. That's not the No, I'm not dying on any hill here, Felice. We've been talking about this for a long time, okay? And we've been talking about this for a long time when you guys are on Nemo's platform. Um, And you want to know what? If all the components and, and the battery power and a lot of this stuff, the infrastructure they're taking away from the private individual, okay? Because they are taking away from the private individual with this infrastructure plan and putting in these car chargers, okay? That's government uh, incentive. Like, if they're going to use it as incentive, I don't. I believe the government's actually putting them in, aren't they? Well, you'd use that same argument to say, like, the government got rid of horses by building roads for cars. 
No, David. these aren't roads for cars. These are like Wait, gas stations, bro. I, David, what I'm saying Same is, fucking thing. David, what I'm saying is, David, is that like as we as we move into like techno, as we have technological advances, the government often invests in infrastructure to allow us to advance quickly. That it, we we the, the government uh, wants America to stay a step ahead, and we don't rely. But I on believe the government's and, building. Uh, them. We don't. We don't rely on private entities entities to build our infrastructure. We never have. That's this never is not a case. railway. Who, bu who built the railroads? Who built these the are roads? stations? Who, yes, who built David, the gas stations? Yes, David. But the gas stations. Private business. Can I explain why it's different, David? Go ahead. Because gas stations require you to go and pay them to pump gas. Just like electricity. Do you pump? Yeah. Do you do you have a truck that comes in and a, a private truck that comes in and dumps uh, electricity in these? No, you have a grid that delivers no. it. It's just no, delivered exactly. in a different means. So what you want to do if you want to incentivize people to buy electric cars, yourself? David, the same shit you were bitching about last week that you had to wait in line for. People aren't yeah. going to be incentivized to adopt the new technology unless it's easy for them to adopt. Sure they the are. I'm involved in and, it. Unless, David, unless it's easy for them to adopt the new technology. So if we build out more charging stations, people are going to be more likely to buy an electric car. It makes Sh sense. Sure, but... Sure, but let me give you one argument on this. The, the, here's the problem is there's people actively right now, and this is why I say I'm involved in because I swear to God I am, okay? Now, listen, there are people buy these machines, okay, and they upsell them and they install them and they pay the contractors to fucking install them on private property and stuff like that, okay? And so people come charge these cars and it's an opportunity for somebody to buy into this new business. It is a good business, but the government doing this is, McDonald's when they sold the shake machines. When they, you ever watched the franchise? Yeah, that, that had nothing to do with federal funding. So, so yeah, yeah, no, 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 exactly. It didn't have anything to do with federal money. You take away from the fucking individual trying to make the money and build out these businesses. The government is is stepping on the the entrepreneur's toes really no, bad. Not. I know David, you want that, David, but we no, don't. They're not. No, they're not. They are. They David, definitely are. David, there's nobody. There's nobody. Like if you look at te even Tesla, like Tesla, the largest electric car company, like they were not able to keep up. Thank with you, demand. Elon Musk. They were not able to keep up with demand on these charging stations. Elon Musk and Tesla lobbied the government to help them. Private <coughs> businesses, David Ford. The tax breaks. That's fine. Shh, 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 shh. Ford, Chevy, Honda, Tesla, Hyundai, Kia. BMW, Mercedes, all of them lobbied yep. our federal government to build more charging stations. The very it doesn't have to happen in a day. Shh, shh, shh. The very private businesses that you say are being crippled by this are the are. same people lobbying the government to build it. They asked for this. Private no, business asked for the government to for step tax in and breaks help them. and incentives. And you because and if Trump was doing this, if Trump was president right now and he was doing this, you'd be making my arguments. Bullshit. You're only against, you're only against this because it's Joe Biden. Elon tax Musk breaks and incentives. Happen. These aren't tax breaks, you dummy. They're asking for no. the government. Shh. They're asking for the government to build the infrastructure. This isn't about tax breaks. Elon Musk is, not the quiet. rest of them. Be quiet, David. Elon the Musk's middle, agenda is way different. Not the, middle, not the middle of my sentence. David, when I am done talking, that's when it's your turn. Do you understand that? Thank you. Guys, tap the screen. Sorry. David. What they is that? Oh, well, well, I can mute it. Okay, David. They asked the government to build out the infrastructure. The government is responding to these private businesses, including Tesla, who want government subsidies and uh, to fund their Ooh, businesses. But also, if you don't know that Tesla is built on government Tesla, subsidies, Tesla, Tesla, because they're trying. Yeah, but all Tesla's the socialism. To Elon Musk survives on socialism. No, no, Elon Musk. Yes, That's the in truth. general, you know, he but, does. I, but not the, not Ford and, and BMW and all these other companies they are fucking lying because if Elon, uh, Elon Musk wants to make Australia the first electric fucking country fully electric country i mean he's got a big incentive to this um but that's different his cause is different just like he did open source you guys hate him it's weird but wait um, david, so all we're, david, but the all government we're david david wait hold on all we're saying is that all of these auto manufacturers lobbied the government to build all these structure no they're not which one didn't lobby the government show me show me who lobbied the government you you want me to, I, I mean i can pull those up and send them to you 
There's no way to. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I have never heard of fucking uh, electric because the private industry. Well, why the, do you think? The why private, wouldn't they lobby that? Why would they not lobby? To, for the government to build it, yeah, or for the build, permitting to do it? No, to build the uh, look the, when like when Tesla builds out these charging stations, it, it's not a net like they don't make money off the charging stations. The reason they built out that infrastructure is so they make people, a lot of money. What are you talking quiet, about, David? Be quiet. Listen, okay. They it's a big industry. David, listen, listen, okay, listen. They don't make money off of the charging stations. They want more charging stations so they can sell more cars because that's how they make more money. So, David, if they can get the government to pay for charging stations, that's more money in their pocket because they don't have to pay for the charging stations. The charging stations don't make money. These companies don't want to pay for it. So the government says, all right, we want electric cars and, and we want we, want, not, we I, want to move. Uh, almost before. done, David, almost done. Uh, I'll charge 48 cents. Shh, shh, what are you talking shh, about, shh, dude? Shh, shh, shh. You don't even know what you're talking about. So the government is saying to these car companies, we'll build out the infrastructure, you continue to innovate and make more electric cars. And that will make uh, that will make everything better for all of us. We will have green energy, we will help you. The government will help you accomplish your goals of selling more electric cars. And we're gonna incentivize electric vehicles instead of incentivizing, instead of incentivizing gas vehicles because we want the innovation to go in a clean direction. If you don't change that picture, I'm booting you right now. Take that down. It's Martin Luther King Day. Copy Martin Five, Luther King Day. Four. Three. You're an absolute coward, David, and you're stupid. All right. That's what? that's that's David. Hold See, on. this Let me is change my background. David ran out of things to say, and he knew that we'd boot him if he. Put no, that. no, he definitely knew. Yeah. He, he knew. He wanted to leave. He was done. Congratulations to anybody in the chat who thinks. Uh, congratulations, Lib Wrangler, for saying David knows what he's talking about. I hope you watched that and watched David uh, not have a clue in hell where he was that entire time. Uh, yeah, you can mute. You can mute David for the rest of the the live mods. That's fine. All right. He tried. I, for the record, I did not want to bring him up. I'm so tired of David. I, it it just, I like. I was friends with David early on, and we're we're at the stage, we're at the cult stage. I like, can tell you guys have shifted. I feel like your friendship is reaching a new stage. Of it's just, it's probably, pe yeah, Animal it's probably city. from growing up. But like, this is the stage of the cult where things get dangerous and people <laughs> just bury their head in the sand. Like, I, I don't know. I, I thought I kept thinking like at some point, like they'll be wrong, they'll be wrong, and David will finally figure it out. But David doesn't even remember the stuff that he got wrong. He doesn't remember a month of them saying release the kraken the kraken like they're gonna they're gonna win all these court cases we're gonna release the kraken they don't re he doesn't remember that he doesn't remember him telling me that we were just around the corner of hillary and obama going to jail like he's been wrong for five straight years and by the way for those in the chat i understand david drives you nuts and i understand that everybody we bring up here on the right drives you nuts and that's fine they drive us nuts too but it's also uh like part of what we want to do is we want to deconstruct uh, right-wing ideas and we want free-flowing discussion we want that so I, I apologize for some of you that get tired of the same people showing up uh, get we need uh, stronger Republicans or you can support us as we grow on YouTube where we have a much bigger uh, we have the ability to take actual phone calls we have the ability to reach out to other YouTube creators the right the the people on this app on the right that are willing to have a debate or a discussion is very small uh, right wingers are mostly keyboard warriors uh, and mostly panelists. It's very difficult at this point to find anybody on the right willing to have a discussion. But I do think that uh, even even in the discussion today, as much as David didn't learn a thing, uh, that's not the goal. The goal is never to convince the person that we're talking to. The goal is that when people are watching, they see that the ideas uh, are, or I guess the the flaws in the argument. Um, and our job is to expose the lies. That's at least that's how we see it. Yeah, and I think, yeah, it's hard for me to not have disin like ugh, the disingenuous arguments like that David's making. Like I think just to talk about 
when we're talking about the electric charging station issue, like I think the overall electric vehicle industry is held up by the fact there's not charging stations across the country and by the fact that Tesla cars are using different plugs than the rest of automakers will. And there is a conglomerate of automakers, seven different automakers who are banding, banding together to fund and create more charging sta stations that will have both types of plugs. And in doing so, hope to get also some subsidy, subsidized funds from the government to do that. Right. And they, they will lobby each state individually as well, yeah. because through the infrastructure bill, yeah, the, a lot of these infrastructure projects are granted by the state. So uh, if you do have a problem with your with this happening in your state, talk to your state legislature. It's still not Biden. But again, the infrastructure bill was was very popular. It, it passed with bipartisan support. Every Republican in this country has on if you go to their website uh, representative excuse every republican representative on their website they will list out all the funding that they got for uh their districts and most of that funding will have come through the infrastructure bill because republicans have rejected everything else so when your republicans talk about the money that they got for their district it came through these type of bipartisan bills so they'll on tv they'll they'll uh demonize it but th they voted for it and those that didn't vote for it are bragging about it it was a great bill, yeah. one, of, one of the best Across bills that we've passed in a long time. Exactly. And there's nothing. Yeah. And that. Yeah, exactly. And we should be able to just all talk about it reasonably. But yeah, like that's a situation where David gets backed into corners and just doesn't want to back down. IB's got a fact for us, guaranteed. I do. I have What's up, a brother. <laughs> appreciate um, you guys all know I, I work in the cell phone industry, right? You know, fix cell phones for a living. The, uh, the vendors that I buy my parts through are US vendors. They buy most of their parts from China, Singapore, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, both companies have privately made aftermarket batteries for iPhones made themselves. They have them sourced through a Chinese manufacturer and they have those shipped over here because they want nice high quality batteries. Well, due to the infrastructure bill and the Chips and Sciences Act, within the next probably year, maybe two, they're gonna be sourcing those batteries and having them manufactured here in the States with no increase in price. So when David sat up there and said, hey, they can't do the batteries as cheap as that, 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 no, it's full of shit. The Chips and Sciences Act is absolutely making a huge impact on it. Whoopsies. Whoopsies. And it's not like in the face of Republicans. We're not, it, it just goes along with a line with what MAGA and the Republicans talk about, right? Like decoupling from China. That's your guys' talking point. That's what you guys want. Joe Biden is doing that. We're showing you ways in which he is decoupling from China and our dependence on China. And then it becomes, oh no, no, it's not happening. Like. We're yeah, that was his. That was one of his quotes in uh, when he rolled this out. It's like this is the whole point of this is so that we get away from China. Just a bizarre thing to say if you're taking bribes from China. Uh, Ivy, was there anything else you wanted to add <laughs> to on try that? Try to decouple with the people bribing you. Station man. What? Sorry, I missed what you said. I said nope. I just wanted to add that into the conversation, brother. As always, it's always insightful when Ivy comes up. Thanks, Hold buddy. Hold on, let me give you a gift. <laughs> Ooh, why? Thank you, please. Ivy, Ivy. I'd be a long time mod, always brilliant. Uh, if you can, I was the first mod. The you were very like one first. of my first followers. I've known you forever, I feel like. Yep. I've been following you for a while. I ended up uh, getting hold of you through uh, Nemo and uh, Political Mom. Yeah. Forever ago. And if you ever need a little, if you ever need a refresher on anything energy related or manufacturing, this is your guy right here. I appreciate that. Thanks, I'd be. Thanks, guys. Have a good Bye. day. Bye. Bye. Always. Every time he shows up, he just comes with heat. Every mm -hmm. I, I, It's one of my favorite things in the world when I see IB in the box. I'm like, all right, he's bringing heat. It's like the opposite of uh, like when David gets in the box. You and, and David might need couples therapy. I think you, when you're talking about the stages of your relationship, I was like, you guys are at this stage. I feel like I, we need to bring in a couples therapist. Maybe we could do it on here. You know what I mean? We'll find a TikTok therapist, a couple's therapist. We'll bring her on and you guys can can work through some of these impasses. She'll quit. I She'll know. quit. Can you She'll imagine? Quit. I can't do anything about that. She won't yeah. be able to make it. Court. Yeah. We... 
I can't even, I would pay, I mean, maybe that's what we'll do. No more debating. It will just be couples therapy when David comes up. Yeah, I'm going to go hard pass on that. <laughs> guys, tap the screen. Oh, we're almost at 300K. Perfect. Great the, job, you guys, guys are doing Thank a great you. job. Because this is, again, this, I'm sorry, I am just have to say it again. This this is RTP Talks 2. This is Jay's backup account. So if you're not following this account, hope, we're hoping that Jay's main account, which was banned indefinitely with no notice of why. What was the violation? <laughs> Something I've never heard of in my life. It's like soliciting goods or like trading yeah, goods. Yeah, it was... Or, uh... It's like it was it sounds um, like you might have been engaging in some prostitution it, yeah like engaging in uh like what was it engaging in the Goods i don't know something basically saying something. like it, things that you're not allowed to sell on TikTok. that i was selling things that yeah, i wasn't allowed like to body. sell which is crazy yeah well i think you're allowed to sell your body on TikTok. <laughs> i've seen some people's streams I found I was scrolling last night and I hadn't seen these before. I'm sure you have. Did I'm it say sure nefarious I'm... goods? Is that people are saying nefarious? I didn't. I don't know. I've never heard of that. I before. can't remember. Um, I don't think it said nefarious, but it was <laughs> along those lines. But I saw somebody yesterday that I'd never seen this where they're just like a an NPC. Have you seen those? I said NPC. That was my thing. I call my new name for Ron DeSantis is the little NPC that could. But have you seen those NPC ones where they just they go like this and then like for every, yes, like I, hard, I like, used to do you. that on our lives. Thank you for the. Is that rose. what you were doing? Uh, yeah, I <laughs> I, I went through that. a stage where I could not stop doing that once I saw those people. But I don't know how they do that. Like I don't. Yeah, it seems. It's hard. the first time I've seen it in a long time. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got a surprise for you. Oh my gosh! This is so crazy. It's our, missed, it's our hi, viewership's Jeff. worst nightmare, but we're happy to talk to you, Jeff. Welcome back. <laughs> I miss you. I haven't talked to you for like months. Hey, guys. <laughs> I miss you, too. Watch you guys every day. I appreciate it. Thanks, Aww. Jeff. Thanks for the support. How are you? What's yeah. going on? I obsess over you every day, RGP. <laughs> <laughs> just don't, just don't uh, wind up wearing my skin someday and we'll be okay. <laughs> Uh, at least your merch, you know. Uh, yeah, get but, yourself uh, some merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Um, no, I like listening to you guys talk. Um, you, 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 you've been bringing up some good points. I like the. Uh, I, I did see Trump's post on um, truth about Vivek, so I thought that was a good job on your behalf, at least to uh, find out what that was all about because i was i was like what what was that all about and then i watched one of your videos i was like nice good job on that that's a good point that was good investigative reporting in fact on our instagram um my former business partner who forced me to do this he's like you can't i'm not working with you anymore you have to go do this full time he he pointed that out too that it was that almost nobody had made that link i felice is the first one i know that made that link that's a good point yeah, that was, and it was very, I was like, that's exactly what he was talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that um, Vivek, it, it, I, 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 when Trump, and he, then Trump made his second post, which he read today, and I thought it is, he, he is playing, he is kind of trying to be cute. You know what I mean? Did he not know he was on camera? I don't know. I It looked like, I mean, he was whispering in a corner with that, like, but yeah, like I said, I'm not, you know, I'm not by no means a Trump fan, but Trump is an original. He was the first. And what I appreciate even less are people doing imitations for him, pretending to be his ally and then sneaking around in corners. Like Vivek started with an Alzheimer's drug, drug pump and dump scheme. And now we're seeing who he is in the corners, in, in dark quarters in Iowa, you know, going behind Trump's back, saying who he really is. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it. Yeah, I thought it was um, like, it, he, he kind of like was like, um, I don't know. It's like he if, if he could, it's like he's like if I can like, you know, sink this one hook, you know, this will be like a good idea. I I, I it was like him like uh, you know slowly introducing it to the world, uh, if you will. Like just a terrible idea though, because um, 
it's so it just makes him look so I just really bad taste in my mouth after that I don't know you can look it looks being away from uh, TikTok is really has calmed really, you uh, calmed could we all find some peace eyes. yeah could we all this. find some peace I, if we... I'm, I'm not sure what to do with this version of you but I like it <laughs> well you know you guys, you know, it's it's good. You 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 the, the way that you I you do present really good arguments, and you do tend to take a neutral stance, which I I like. But you also, um, but it's still like a little bit a bi bit a bias against Trump. But look, I, I'm still supporting Trump. You know, I I think that. God damn it! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and look look at all this. Look, look at what everything that's happening right now. Like it's I don't see. I don't see anything really good happening for the Democrats too much. Well, I mean, I, I guess, but if if we're talking about where where we are from where Joe Biden took over, what what's worse now than when Joe Biden took over? What's not better? Um, what's not better? Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I think it just, you know, I mean, it's it's the same things that have been going on since day one, since, since it all started in 2016. It's the same, you know, you, you, it's, what do you it's mean? everything with COVID, uh, everything well, with the, you know, investigations into Trump, like all, all this stuff is like still coming out, you know? Okay, so I guess what I'm hearing is that you're recognizing that economic indicators um everything has gotten better since joe biden took office from from where he took office at to now things are better but you still just believe that trump's being unfairly prosecuted and you still don't believe that they handled COVID right which mostly happened under trump but also happened under biden right but i mean obviously COVID has gotten better we have way less people getting COVID. when people do get COVID, uh it's much more mild we're able to treat it we have new treatments uh, we're quicker at identifying it. Obviously, uh, massive amounts of people being vaccinated has been super helpful. So I, I just don't I just don't see from a Republican side outside of the border. I don't I don't know what has gotten worse under Biden. Everything else has gotten better. But I, it does seem like the Republican messaging is that everything's gotten worse. But when you actually go in and look at the indicator, like, I don't know what's gotten worse. We have more people at our southern border. Everything else is better than the day he took office. And we can only really judge him on the things that happened while he was in office, which is every year he's gotten better. Every year he has cut, despite the fact that we've had to in, invest in, in infrastructure, we had COVID, uh, we had, uh, we've, we've had more spending. We have reduced deficit spending from, from Trump levels. Like we're, we're trending down in deficit spending, despite the fact that there was a lot to fix. I think it's a very it's it's the most hyper partisan we've ever been where a sitting president uh, has every every economic indicator has gotten better since he entered office and people are viewing him as a massive failure. It's it's kind of wild to me, to be honest. I don't get it. No, I and if I said that things have gotten worse, I I don't think I said that. I didn't mean to say that. That's not what I meant, because I don't think things have gotten worse. You're right. Things have gotten better. But that's not like, you know, it was that hard for Joe Biden to make, you know, everything was 100 percent locked down. It was shut down. So it was like not that difficult. But yeah, I agree. You know. It would have been if Joe, if things had gotten better. But the numbers were still worse than than where Trump was at. I, I think you'd have a good argument, but he has he has surpassed all of Trump's numbers, too. So not not only is it better than when he took over, but it's uh, the economic indicators are mostly better than what Trump had. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know what, everything since 2020 put me in like a huge kerfuffle. And now I'm like, you know, I'm fucking I'm, I'm bouncing back. I'm, I'm 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 neutralizing back to normal now, you know, so kerfuffle is the best word. I miss your vocab. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I do agree with what you're saying. And, you you know, everybody you debate, you methodically pick them apart with really good facts. Like it's 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 good stuff, you know, and like like, you know, me, man, I'm, I'm more I've always been more of a liberal, like I just like generally like want to make things better and help the environment and stuff. And I, I think that what happened was, you know, it's just this it. it 
I can say that my eyes have been open to politics and I think it's that the both sides do the same thing to each other. Like it's crazy. Yeah. I don't know if you were here at the beginning. Neither side is like uh, innocent in all this. <laughs> no, I agree. I, I don't know if you were here at the beginning, but I think you fall into like, there, there's a, there's a subset of people that, um, the, the way that they believe, like you have a, a massive distrust for the government and, and that's fair. Uh, you, you'll tend to believe that, um, most of the stuff the government is saying is untrue. So I, I, I kind of, uh, there's a lot of people like you where socially you're going to be liberal. You want what's best for the planet, but you don't trust the government. So anybody who appears to be establishment, you, you, your knee jerk reaction is to oppose them. I think that the, the issue, and, and I like, I, I think that's a good thing. I think it's good to have skeptics like that. I think the problem is, is that the people that are representing the skeptics, the people that represent you are just complete frauds. You have Vivek, you have uh, Trump, and, and they're, the, they're the most obvious frauds uh, possible. Like they, they stand for nothing. Um, Donald Trump's, uh, the best evidence that Donald Trump is anti deep state is that he's being prosecuted. Unfortunately, all of the indictments have mountains of evidence. There, there's, I, I think you really have to close your eyes in order to say that the, it, at the very least, the indictments don't have solid evidence backing them up. So the, the evidence that he is somehow not part of the deep state is a little bit silly to me, especially considering he's running now on, hey, when I get back in office, we're going to deep state the fuck out of this. Like we are literally going to now be the deep state. I'm going to have all the power and I'm going after everybody who said anything bad about me. So it's kind of a, it's, it kind of sucks that like the people that represent the views uh, that the anti-corruption are, are potentially the most corrupt people. And that's what sucks. Cause I, I understand your point of view. It makes sense to me, but I, I just think that your representation is, is, uh, some corrupt grifters. Yeah. And I mean, I think that Trump, you know, the, the whole thing about it is if, you know, he, he, the way he leveraged, um, like turning the people against the system is very concerning too. You know, I, I hope that, you know, that he's a hundred percent right in what he's saying, because, you know, he, he's just pitting us, you know, it's just making our divide even deeper. But I mean, look, if these things are happening, this, it has to happen, you know, either way, but you know, I think that's why a lot of like people hate Trump too, is because, you know, he really did divide us even more deeper division than we ever had, you know? Yeah, maybe the system's corrupt, but the system's also good too. Like it also does a lot of good. So it's like, you know, it, it's finding who, who the happy, are you? Happy who are you right now? Dude, this is the real me. <laughs> this is like, this is the real this is the Twilight this is Zone. Mask off. I love it. Look, I, I yeah, this is mask off. Like I was on TikTok and I wanted to do all that shit. We you know try to get the views and debate and everything like that. But you know I, that's another problem with TikTok. It almost like put, remember when I used to say that. that Jeff was a normal person. That's true. I am very, I am I behind closed doors. Know, she did call you normal. This is the Jeff uh, I knew outside of TikTok. And that's why I would like get so angry and be like, why are you doing this? <laughs> this is why. No, oh, exactly. It's just because you get entrenched on your own, especially with social media when you have followers and it's like all this, you know, oh God, you know. So, you know, it, it, honestly, it's like I, I've been off TikTok. I feel like completely different, like listening to people talk now. It's actually like I'm actually this like willing to listen. You know, I don't have any skin in the game, you know, so. It's very self-aware. It's very self -aware. I don't have anything to say. I I love it. I, I, I like that. I like that. Um, the way that you're positioning your arguments are is sensible and i i get it like i i don't think that there's a politician that uh, that i can think of that is worth that i would put my name next to that i would wear a, apparel for that i would put a, a yard sign in my yard that i would put up a bumper sticker for it, uh, unless mitt romney runs because he is uh, mm -hmm. he is republican jesus but um I, I i think that that's a sensible way to look at things and i think that's one of the things where we've gone too far is that people started at, at some point and maybe some of that started with Obama. Um, it certainly took off with Trump, but people attach themselves to a candidate and that's scary. That's where it looks like a cult to me. That, that reminds me of my childhood 
when like we 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 just say we're told like the prophet everything the prophet says is true we don't we don't disagree with the prophet and even when the prophet's wrong we just pretend they weren't wrong and we move on to the next thing and we that's not important this thing is important and it just like it, it literally just gives me flashbacks every time i talk to somebody that's like not i like trump because of his policies but i, I like trump because he's going to save us those people scare me and and that uh, that type of worship makes me nervous for like the political discourse of our country going forward because if you if you can't if you can't accept the idea that the person that you voted for is wrong or the person that you voted for is corrupt you've got a real problem like i need to i need to be open to the idea that joe biden is corrupt i do uh and 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 obviously i i think we have i think we've dug through every accusation that they've ever brought to him but I, that's that's the part that we can't do. We can't turn, and the left needs to be careful about this. If we were to bring up somebody, uh, you know, a, a real leftist hero, we also have to be careful to not take somebody on. Like I, I think this could potentially happen with Michelle Obama, where Michelle Obama could take take on like a cult like presence. Where let's just say she was corrupt. I think a lot of people would be really hesitant to see that she was corrupt because we all love her so much, and I think that's something we have to be careful with in politics. Well, it's like um, I, Michelle Obama. It's just, yeah, that's a good point because it's so hard to imagine. And I'm like, no, not Michelle. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's but, like, and that's like how well, the Trump I, I'm just are. saying like, yeah. it's like gold bar Bob, like Bob Menendez is, if you read the indictment, it's probably one of the most corrupt people to ever have come through the Congress. You know what I mean? And he's a Democrat and it's just corruption is on both sides of the aisle and we need to look at the facts and hold people accountable. Yeah. Whether it's Michelle Obama, whether it's Donald Trump, the law needs to be applied uniformly and we need to hold people accountable. Yeah, I gotta say, no, you're absolutely right. And Trump, Trump is a good, he he is a good salesman, you know, and what he did, like, he, dude, honestly, I was that guy in 2020, like, I thought that Trump was going to be reinstated, like, legitimately. So that's like, so how you really far down yeah, the rabbit hole you can go. <laughs> you really thought, so did you think, how did you think that was going to happen? Did you think it would happen through the courts? Or how did you think he was? Oh, my move? dude, I had no, I, I thought the military something maybe with the military, because I was watching all those stupid podcasts with the ex all the weird shit talking about the military. Dan Bongino. Yeah, maybe John Dan Bongino is tame compared to some of the other crazies like on. Oh, were you on Nick like, Fuentes? Where were you at? I didn't. How yeah, far I didn't. Right did you go? Yeah, man. I, I it's just just you know with all the stuff with the virus and every and and Trump saying it was rigged and everything like that. I just completely I took it hook line and sinker, you know. But now I'm I'm like okay, now I'm much more neutral about it, you know. I'm not saying he was wrong, but I'm not going to be like fucking go fully off the deep and you know trying to like, you know, worry about the elections and shit, you know. Did you did that? Do you think that happened just because you got away from like you were because every day you were forced to defend that, right? And then you took you took some time off. Do you think that's kind of what happened is like you weren't forced to defend it anymore? And so you, you saw it maybe a little more clearly or do you have an idea exactly. of why this no, started no, making that's... sense to you? Well, it, well, I mean, we're talking, I started thinking this stuff in 2020 when Trump first got out there and said the election was, was whatever, you know, so that's, and then I, I, then I got on TikTok and I started debating and I sort of started to come back into the middle a little bit, debating people like you and, you know, everybody like that with, with good, good arguments and stuff. And then, you know, and then if I, then once I got off TikTok, then I had, I hadn't have to worry about like arguing, I could just listen, you know, because you know, I I think I know a lot, but on with politics, I mean, I, I I don't I don't know that much, you know, and I'm a little bit too confident, you know. You like you said, you don't want you don't want to know, uh, you know, be confident about knowing everything, you know. And that was well, that's where I was getting to. Like Trump is right, he's winning, he's winning. It's just like this is you know, without even like putting too much weight into like how these things are really happening, you know. So it's no that makes sense i think i mean i think it's really easy to be poorly educated on on pol or, or like misinformed not poorly educated misinformed because there's so many voices out there and some of them are really compelling and and some of them i don't remember who i saw the other day that oh it was frank luntz actually he was on c-span i think on, on like one of those call-in shows and somebody came up and they were talking about the the election being stolen and he just said he's like look dude, like, I understand where you're coming from. 
He's like, I, I, I went through all this data though. Like I heard the same thing you did. And I went through all the data. I checked out 2000 mules. I looked at everything and he's, and he said, but I, I want to just, I, I want to say that you're not crazy. Like you're listening to well-spoken people. They put out things like 2000 mules or they have really nice websites and what they say sounds convincing, but most people aren't going to get into the metadata. So it, it really is to, it really is not hard to hear a convincing narrative of something. Um, it's not hard to believe that our government is corrupt. It's not hard to believe that they're hiding something. And there are people that are really skilled at making you believe uh, w with limited evidence. And I, I've never figured out if they believe it or not. Uh, if, if they're just researching with confirmation bias or if they have a real agenda, I've never figured that out. I don't particularly care. But it is, you can spend hours informing yourself. You could spend all day informing yourself and feel like I've got to, and, and you could still be woefully misinformed. It, that's the hard part is sifting through like what's real and what's not. That's the part exactly. that takes time. And it takes a lot of self-reflection. Like, and you really have to constantly check, like, do I, do I want to be right? Or do I want to get it right? Am I, am I approaching this with confirmation bias or not? I think I've become much more well-informed since Felice came around because Felice is heavy on sources and it's forced me to go more into metadata. And, and I think that's, people have probably seen, I, I get accused more of being like a little bit more middle ground. And I think that's because I've surrounded myself with somebody who won't let me take a, a viewpoint where I don't have the data to back it up. She'll check me on that. Exactly. Well, it, you, 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 that, that's, that's, you always, you always have the data, but here, here's what I, I gotta get going guys. But here's what I'll say is that, um, I've, the one thing I, I've learned a lot about politics though. And I think that it's just a, it's a game on both sides of left and right, trying to get votes and it's a popularity contest and, and it's, and yielding the results of like politics. Politics is uh, dirty sometimes. It's not what, you know, it's a whole nother animal of like ideals and what's going on with our country and it's so important that we that we all have a good understanding of it so i i never regret what i've done i've been misinformed i've been wrong but it's been a good journey so far and we'll see what my next uh, step is going to be well I, I just tell you man you sound great you sound happier i can, I can tell you that like you, i know before you were putting you sound on show, like at peace but yeah you sound bit. you sound great um i'm glad Thanks, that you guys. found that piece you sound great yeah, well, I'm always watching, guys. Always watching. Wait, wait. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll make sure to keep Felice around so you keep watching. Uh, of course, of course. Right. So gotta give, you got to be easy on the eyes. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks, Bye, Felice. Bye, RTP. I would debate you any day on, like, Jeff has always loved you <laughs> more at first. <laughs> you were Jeff's first love. He loved me first. For sure. <laughs> For sure. I don't know about that. Uh, Miss Julie, I, I see in there. Um, I know uh, Jen told me you needed five minutes. Could we, could I just put, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put you at the last like five minutes. I'd like to end on that note because it's always hard for me to recover from a Miss Julie and talk about politics. So if you can, if you can wait, Miss Julie, if not, if it's urgent, let Jen know. But if not, I, it's what, 1240. So we've got 20 ish more minutes. So give me like f 15 more minutes and then I'll bring you up. Guys, let's tap the screen. Let's try to get to as close to 400K as possible before the live ends. If RTB doesn't get his main account back, we want to get as much clout built up on this account so we can get to the For You page faster tomorrow and hopefully get some more opposition. Looking for opposition in the box. I know that didn't seem like opposition. We were not, I was not expecting when Jeff came up for that to be that. And, and he's still opposition, in all fairness. He's just, he's just, uh, yeah, he said controlled he's opposition. For yeah, it's just less combative, right? That that's good advice for anybody, um, whether you're on the right or left, and and it's it's easy to do this. And again, I like I will just say that uh, I feel really really fortunate that not only do I have Felice, but uh, I have a moderator team. I've got a, a Discord with with very like th that is really supportive. But if you find yourself in a place where politics make you angry, where just hearing somebody on the other side gets your blood to boil do, do a jeff we'll call it doing a jeff like take a little time off just step away from the media for a minute because he is right right or left the media they want you to keep watching they want eyes um and and some people aren't great at it and so the only they, they're not going to give you like a, a breakdown like a deep breakdown so their only option is to scare you and that exists on the right or, or the left like you I don't, I'm trying to think of a left-leaning content creator that, 
that is like that. Most of them I've I've turned off. Even like even Midas Touch for the most part. Uh, Michael Cohen. I won't listen to Michael Cohen for very long unless he's talking to somebody that I haven't heard from because it, it's just fear. It's fear monger, fear monger, fear monger, fear monger. Um, but if you find yourself where like it, just hearing somebody speak makes your blood boil, take a little time off. Just just step away for a minute. Um, or stop listening to the to that exact source. I, I, none of this is worth your happiness. Like the, is it true that our country could take a hard shift if Donald Trump wins? Yeah. Am I scared of that? Yeah. But ultimately, what does that matter if I don't take care of my my own mental health? What does it, what does it matter if I wake up every day enraged? What does it matter if uh, you know I can't? Um, I, I've had days like that, and I've I've had to check out where you know I'm I'm spending the time with my daughter, and I'm thinking about. Uh, something crazy that that Trump said or something crazy that's happening in the courts like don't don't let politics uh, get you to the point where you can't enjoy life yeah I agree and I just don't have a life so yeah so it's nothing to enjoy <laughs> or you could be like me and just don't have a life <laughs> no you, to Felice enjoy has, Felice has found I, I believe she's found uh, a lot of joy in making content this last weekend i think you were really oh maybe i I'm love me yeah, yeah no no for sure i'm not yeah like i have a life <laughs> i just feed yeah you know, i uh, yeah i absolutely love making content so legally mormon wants to challenge me on something how dare you you oh, son of look a bitch who it is it's the judge you know here's <laughs> what? what it was you've said and i heard you say it and don't you deny it that a mormon is your political savior that's right. God, my Lord and Savior, Mitt, Mitt uh, Willard Romney. Uh, you guys I heard that about it. fell out of my chair as I'm sitting home uh, without work because the courthouse. <laughs> but I've got to tell you, I, I, I was joking about disagreeing with you and, and a couple things here. It was so sweet what you said about Felice there, about she's making you better. She's Because she does bring the receipts, as the kids say these days. As the kids say these days. Yeah, the she brings receipts and she does make everybody smart. I love this. Is, this, is, this could sound so sexist that I'm afraid to say it, but one of the great things about her videos is she doesn't say a damn thing. She plays it. And you have to, you have to, I know, I know it sounds <laughs> bad. Like, don't say anything. I'm kidding. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Like, she, she picks the, there's times when she narrativizes and there's other times when she's able right. to find the clip that speaks for itself. Yeah, and, I agree with you. And, yeah. and she speaks, trust me, she, her facial expressions are her speaking. Don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> you can totally see what she thinks about that video, but it's a, it, it, she brings those freaking receipts. She brings them and says, you know, here's, here's the, the quote, here's what they're saying in their own words. But I was also getting on today just because uh, you said that your Mormon board and savior, Mitt Romney, uh, is your political hero. And I got, even though I was saying I, I don't agree, or I, I was going to challenge you, I kind of agree. We need more Mitt Romneys. We need more people who are willing to stand up. John against, McCain's. John McCain's, that's right. People who will stand up against their own party sometimes because that's what takes courage. Um, you know, the, 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 we don't see that. And you can see it with Jeff. You know, Jeff seems like he's pretty open to saying, as a Republican, that he doesn't like Donald Trump. And that's pretty big, even though he didn't say he wouldn't vote for him. Uh, and I think you see that on the left with, with you know, with Gen Z, but also the farther, you know, the progressive saying, like, I don't like what Joe Biden's doing. Like, if you can't criticize, if you can't objectively look at the leader of your party and say, this direction is not serving us anymore and turn away from it, then you're in an echo chamber. <laughs> you may be in a cult. You went off on Bob Menendez, who's a Democrat. Yeah. Well, Bar Bob, get out. Right. <laughs> well, he did something else. He got busted for something no, for taking well, actual no, bribes last no, week. No, last. Well, yeah. I mean, it turns out first it was he's bri being bribed by the Egyptian government. Then it turns out Qatar. There was a superseding indictment. Like same thing with Qatar. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's just getting it from everybody. Yeah. Well, and I've heard RTP say this. And when David can't even acknowledge that Donald Trump does something wrong. Even RTP would say, like, if, if Joe Biden did something wrong, if he broke the law, if his, if Hunter did, let them be prosecuted. Let them go after them. If, if now, if you start talking about Don Jr. Uh, making money off of uh, his father's presidency, will they say, yes, go after Don Jr.? They won't. Or I don't want to say they, excuse me. David won't. Uh, you know, the, his hardcore followers won't do what Felice just did by going after Mendez or what RTP just did by, or you didn't do it today, but saying go after Hunter Biden if he did something wrong. If he broke the law, let him, let it be done. 
Yeah, well, like it, it, oh. if if Biden got in trouble, just so we know, if there was evidence that Biden committed a crime, right. and we had the opportunity to slide Gavin Newsom in, like we that's would. great. It it's a net benefit. If Biden's guilty, that's good for me. <laughs> like it's good I, for all of I us. get somebody. Yeah, we, that's better for the Democrat Party if he's guilty. That's the crazy thing. Like I really don't care if he's guilty. Uh, and and it, it might actually be like a win for us if he was guilty because Newsom would would wipe the floor with anybody. But again, like we're, we're going to rely on the evidence. I have a question for you since you're here, Judge, and okay, billable sorry. legal hours and all. Yeah. I'm going to use my uh -huh. time uh -huh. wisely. About the presidential immunity, the Supreme, or not the Supreme Court, the D.C. Court of Appeals, that hearing. Did you happen to catch that? I didn't. I didn't. Oh. Well, you missed so. a good one. But you know, here's the other thing, just on that subject. I, I was interviewed on something once, and it was, it was this. Whatever you're prepared to say about whether it's immunity or the powers of an executive, you better be prepared to have that exact same position when it's the other party. And exactly. It's funny that Trump is talking about they'll prosecute Biden. He's, he's saying a couple of things that we're going to go after Biden, whatever, all the people they're going to go after. Wait a second. I thought the president has immunity. Wait, I thought I thought you're arguing that the president can shoot somebody in order to seal the six. <laughs> not under fascism. Not if you suspend the Constitution. That's oh, only God. if you believe in the Constitution, which he doesn't. But that double standard, or not, it's not really, I don't know what they're arguing with that statement that it's okay for Donald Trump to order SEAL Team 6 to kill a political rival, rival but Joe Biden is, and by the way, he's separate from the DOJ. His DOJ uh, is, is pursuing Trump as if they're and, and the arguments we made, well, I have immunity. And then they're also saying when I become president, I'm going to go after Joe Biden. So what is it? Yeah, just to be clear, uh, Biden's DOJ also pursuing his own son. Right. Right. So for, 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 a, for a biased DOJ, uh, they they sure don't seem to have a problem uh, investigating Hunter Biden. No what problem. doing That's that's where the Republicans got all this information from that investigation that's why we know all this stuff because biden's department of justice is investigating his own son <laughs> one thing that's hard for people to understand is especially it takes intelligence to see nuance to see the deeper side of things and when you say the, when i say the biden's department of justice he is separate from his attorney general he is separate from the different uh districts that make up the, the attorney generals throughout the different, you know, whether it's in the northern district of a state or southern district of a state or wherever, um, he's separate from that. Those are not decisions that he makes and that he gets to decide who they go after. And probably in previous decades, I'm just watching Selma today where you have LBJ talking with Jay Edgar, having him do things. Those days are mostly in our rear view and we're better off because of it. I'm not saying that it's completely that way. But it, it, those days are mostly in our rear view where a president intervenes on those things because people will find out. And a lot of people on the right think that this is Joe Biden going after uh, Donald Trump. It's not. It couldn't be further from the truth. It is a separate and independent Department of Justice that will go after those those people and things. So anyway, I agree. I got to get to I promise yeah, Miss Julie the I last five minutes. I got to get to her talking to you. Take care. Always a pleasure. Talk to Thank you later. You. Bye. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, I think that's a good point. One thing to remember about the Donald Trump presidency and is how many people from the Department of Justice, uh, attorney generals, FBI directors, CIA directors, how many people left uh, resigned because Donald Trump was asking them to do things as favors to him. He, he made a good point there that that's mostly a thing of the past because the the FBI, the DOJ, like they they know that they're not supposed to operate at the request of the president. How, that's why James Comer uh, Comey quit. Ooh, not Comer. He, I wish he would quit. <laughs> I was like, what? No. That, uh, that <laughs> dumb bitch. Uh, but yeah, that's why that's why Comey left. That's why uh, Jeff Sessions stepped down because Donald Trump asked them for loyalty to him, uh, which. You don't want to believe that. Remember now, one of Trump's defenses is that he did not swear an oath to the Constitution. That's one of his new defenses, is that he swore an oath uh, to yeah, become president, but not to the Constitution. Just re remember, he doesn't give a shit about that. While Miss Julie's coming up, this is my last time saying it, but this is RTP's backup. Hopefully he'll get his main account back, but we don't know. So follow RTP Talks too, so that you can find us all next week and tap the screen. Let's get try, let's try to get to 400k by the end of the live. Thank you guys so much for all your support.
and real quick before Miss Julie, for those saying uh, James Comey was fired, if you know the whole story, you know what happened. James Comey was going to resign. He told Donald Trump he was going to resign. And Donald Trump quickly wrote a tweet and fired him because Comey was going to resign. So for, don't for one second think that that was about Donald Trump and corruption. That is Donald Trump pretending that uh, that he was firing a corrupt person when that person he knew was going to call out the corruption of Donald Trump. Uh, get your stories fact or straight. But Miss Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Hi, Julie. Hello, love. How are you guys? Great. Wonderful. You're here. Well, I got to say, I'm about as stoned as a whore in biblical times. Whew. My gosh, I'm going to have to use that. That was <laughs> that was hilarious. That was amazing. I'm writing that down. I can't lie. I stole that from Stoner Gump. If you're not familiar with this content, uh, I had asked him a question on one of his videos and he made a response video to me. And I just <laughs> y'all need to follow Stoner Gump. That's beautiful. I got to stay quiet because I'm, I'm kind of hiding out. Uh, uh, let me get my chapstick. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Mm, it's not on account of the weather either. And, uh, it's cold as hell here. <laughs> oh, wee. You know, I, I got in a fight with a Canadian. Oh, I'm no. Tiki talk. I thought they were the nicest people. They think us Americans are stupid. I've been trying to warn you guys about the Canadians, but nobody oh, wants to listen goodness. to me. Oh, my goodness. It's not even right. Okay? Was it a French Canadian? Oh, I once got yelled at by a, a French Canadian. Oh, la Quebecois. Oh, they're oh. brutal. They were coming for me. Okay, friend. I know that kind of impressed you, Jay, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I felt something right there. I don't know what it was, but I felt something, Miss Julie. I'm a, I'm a very cunning linguist. I try not to slur my words. Because <laughs> we're on the con, I'm high. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. So what happened in your fight? Is that what you wanted to tell me about? No, you see, Jay, I, I had to quit my part-time job. Because uh, there was a little trouble, so now I'm hiding out in my place, hoping that the feds don't come for me. I was unaware that you had a part-time job. What was your part-time job, Miss Julie? Is Biden's DOJ targeting you? I don't know for sure yet. I'm going to have to wait and see who shows up, if anybody does. I don't know. They're probably busy fighting with the Texas Border Patrol. Those bastards. Wait, what was your part-time job that is getting you in so I'm much trouble? Get to that. Jay, this is going to take about three days so I don't keep you on forever and monopolize your show, Graham. Yes, but ma'am. See, I got the part-time job because I'm trying to save up. You know, I've got my vacation next week already. Can you believe it? So Point I, of Key West. Yeah, I was trying to save up for one of those fancy Brazilian waxes. I heard they're all the rage. So I was trying to get one of those and I want a lobster roll while I'm there. So I was trying to save up some money. Got my cash app in my bio. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Jay, I, I got a job at the strip club. Okay. I was working in the kitchen. You know, don't get too excited. Okay. But I was getting really bored because we can't serve food on account that, uh, how can I put this delicately, delicately, uh, we provide a real garden of Eden experience, so therefore we cannot serve food. So I got pretty bored in the kitchen and, you know, the music was so catchy and I learned all the dances. It was great fun. Yeah. And the girls, the girls were lovely. They used to come visit me, tell me how to make better tips, and they taught me all about the business and gave me tax advice, and they even taught me about self-defense. It was amazing. Great. Oh, it was fantastic. I loved it there. But I guess they decided I wasn't earning my keep, so I hatched a bit of a plan. Now, see, the clubs closed on Sundays and Mondays. For church, but, yeah. Uh, you know, I had a feeling that was a missed revenue stream, and I was about to capitalize on it. 
decision? I, I can't tell you anymore, Jay. It's almost that time. I'll have to come back and tell you tomorrow. We have to wait till tomorrow? You're going to have to wait. Kind of, I'm excited. I like yeah. the, This is good. Look at Miss Julie with the teas. The Little cliffhanger. Pro. Look oh at my you. Goodness. The cliffhanger. I know. What are y'all going to do until I think tomorrow? I've caught up on the story, so I understand like what's going on now. So oh, now I it's like more, so. much so more exciting for me. I, like, I've I'm been at this I am since, invested now. I have been at this since the end of August, believe <laughs> I know. I just got I, I just have to. I have to put the content out. Faith was helping me, and then I just kind of lost track of things. But that's beside the point. So anyway, tomorrow I'll tell you what I did for some extra revenue, and it was clever. It was smart. But of course, the man took advantage of me, so I'll tell you tomorrow. I got, whoa, somebody's knocking. I got to run. You guys (laughs) hope for the best for me. I got to be able to make that trip next week. I'm coming. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! She's been cut I off. I wonder who was out the door. Like, I love yeah, Miss Julie. She's you, amazingly uh, un. She's like so intelligent. Like I, yeah, love it. Yeah, you missed the the original when it first happened. Uh, I didn't. I had no idea that it was coming. Like I, it, Fee was around. And Fee's like, hey, Miss Julie wants to talk about something. So I had no idea. I had no <laughs> idea that she was going to tell me the story. Uh, and hopefully somebody, I, I, hopefully we have the whole thing. It, um, and and we can get it put together as a story. The story of Miss Julie. It's a true story. And uh, look, she's been she's been through it all. And uh, we love Miss Julie. Thank you guys for sending gifts to Miss Julie. By the way, we definitely appreciate that. We want this to be a place where she can be creative. So I appreciate you guys uh, gifting Miss Julie. And on also appreciate you guys. Uh, showing love to each other when when guests come up here and and helping them out. I I think that uh, we however big our community is, we've built a, a community that supports each other, and I appreciate that. And showing love to Jay. Everyone's fingers must be sore today from all that tapping. Thank you guys so much for helping. And then if anything can be done or we need any help with Jay's backup account, we'll let you guys, or getting his account back, I'll let you guys know tomorrow. But thank you guys so much for all the support. And now we can all go watch the Iowa caucus drama unfold. Now the Discord link in my uh, bio is broken. We invite any of you who want to come hang out in the Discord. Uh, it is not a, it's not the safest place, but it is kind of a safe place. Uh, we have a bunch of lunatics in there. It's a fun place. Our moderator team has been, has spent the last week coming up with ideas. Uh, like I said, they have a book club, but we'll be hosting events inside the discord. Um, we'll, we'll be working with people inside the discord to host, uh, special events. Um, we want to get involved politically. So if, if you just want a place to hang out or if you want to get involved politically, you want to uh, discuss books, discuss politics with people. Uh, we'll be building a website. We have all sorts of things that are that are happening. Please join the Discord. It's free. Our intent is for it to always be free. So come hang out in the Discord. Uh, you can shoot me a DM or Jen. Jen will put up a Jen will put up her uh, some sirens or something right now so that you guys can see that Jen is there. Uh, send Jen a message or send me a message on my main account or here. But if it's on this one, I, I might be a little slower. I'll get you a link to the Discord. Uh, it's broken on our Jen Patreon says, part. message me. <laughs> yeah, message Jen. That's the smartest thing to do. Um, uh, also, if you're not following our YouTube, uh, please subscribe to YouTube. Also free. Um, and it, it helps us if, if you turn on those notifications. And when a, a, it, the shorts come on, we just were po- Felice is posting like. I don't know, 300,000 shorts this weekend. Felice probably spent 30 hours making content just this weekend. So support us there. I do not have a life. A like, yeah, a like, a share, a comment. Uh, It goes a long way. It helps us more than you know. So if if you like what we're doing and you like to see more of it, just just help us out that way. All that stuff is free to do. There's a link to our merch that's in the link tree as well. Um, and then of course we have, uh, we have subscriptions on here and gifts, but mostly we just want your support, the, the likes, the shares, the comments, and that goes a long way for us. Thank you guys for showing up today. 412,000 likes on a backup account. Uh, amazing you guys. Thank you. And we will see you tomorrow. And I can't wait for the conclusion of Miss Julie's story tomorrow. I can't wait for that. All right. Teamwork makes the dream work. They, uh, by the way, what? we will tease this and I'll tell you guys about tomorrow. But we found Nina. 
Gorilla Radios, Nina. We found Nina. And Nina, if you're here right now, I, I, I saw that you DM'd me right before uh, we went live. I know that you DM'd me. I will, I will be messaging you back. We will be, we'll be in contact. So we have found <gasps> Nina. Uh-oh, Gorilla. We go. We'll Nina. see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.